Imagine if just three hours stood between you and a radically transformed life where stress, anxiety and uncertainty no longer hold you back. What if I told you that the ancient philosophy of Stoicism holds the key to unlocking a more resilient, focused and fulfilling existence? Join us as we dive deep into Stoicism, exploring practical steps that can reshape your mindset, boost your resilience and radically alter your life in just three hours. Ready to start this life-changing journey? Let's begin. In today's fast-paced world, where stress and anxiety seem to be constant companions, many of us are searching for ways to find peace and resilience amidst the chaos. But what if I told you that an ancient philosophy developed over 2,000 years ago could offer us the very tools we need to thrive in our modern lives? This is the power of Stoicism, a philosophy that teaches us how to find contentment and strength by embracing virtue, wisdom, and the understanding that we control our reactions to the external world. In the next three hours, we're going to take a deep dive into the heart of Stoicism. We'll explore its origins, key concepts, and the lives of the Stoic philosophers who practiced it. More importantly, we'll uncover practical strategies derived from Stoic teachings that you can apply to your life immediately. These strategies are designed to help you develop mental clarity, emotional strength, and a profound sense of inner peace. By the end of this journey, you'll not only have a deeper understanding of Stoicism, but also practical tools to transform your approach to life's challenges. You'll learn how to turn obstacles into opportunities, stress into serenity, and uncertainty into understanding. So, if you're ready to transform your life with the wisdom of Stoicism, let's take the first step together. Welcome to three hours to transform your life with Stoicism. Let the transformation begin. What does don't set yourself on fire to keep someone else warm mean? It's a strong reminder that self-care and kindness should go hand in hand, which comes from ancient Stoic wisdom. But in today's rush to be liked, and always be the one who helps, many people have turned the good deed of kindness into a habit that hurts their self-esteem. People often tell us to go the extra mile and push our limits for other people. But how much does it cost? Too much kindness is not a virtue when it drains your own resources, energy and health. It is a way to ruin yourself. Many people have lost their way and have given so much that they feel empty, unappreciated and worn out. In this modern tragedy, people who mean well end up doing terrible things. Stoicism shows us a different way to be generous without giving up who you are, to be kind without being mean to yourself. It teaches us how to be generous in a way that makes other people's lives better while also looking out for our own. It's time to show how Stoic principles can help you set healthy limits so that your kindness builds you up instead of draining you. We'll talk about how to give without taking away, love without hurting, and be there for others without leaving our own lives behind. Follow us as we use Stoic wisdom to find the balance between being kind and taking care of ourselves. 1. Don't set yourself on fire to make other people warm. Marcus Aurelius, a wise Stoic philosopher, would warn us not to fall into the trap of unnecessary kindness. Picture yourself as someone who is always willing to help others and never says no. Giving away parts of yourself until there are none left is like that. You turn into someone who is always there for other people, but when you need help, you find yourself all by yourself. Being kind to other people is important, but being kind to yourself is even more important. Marcus would always remind us that taking care of ourselves is our first duty. We can't really be there for other people without it. Think about the story of two gardeners who lived next door to each other. One took great care of their own garden, and the other, even though they had their own plot, often helped take care of other people's gardens. Knowing the value of self-care, the diligent gardener gave their garden the right amount of care and resources, 
making it a vibrant and growing place. This gardener's plot not only brought them joy, but they also had extra food to share with their neighbors. The other gardener, on the other hand, spent so much time and energy on other people's gardens that they forgot about their own. They didn't take good care of their garden, so it died and didn't produce much. They forgot about their own needs while trying to help others, which left their garden and, in a way, themselves empty. This is a reminder to think about what you want to do before you start helping other people. Ask yourself if this help will last. Am I taking care of my health? By establishing healthy boundaries and making sure that in our efforts to be kind, we don't forget to be kind to ourselves. The ancient Stoics would advise us to practice Stoicism. You can't pour from a cup that's not full after all. Stoicism says that you should keep your inner peace and honesty while also making the lives of others better. This will help you and the people you want to help live a balanced and satisfying life. 2. Being friendly with someone has an end date. Generosity is a good trait that makes our lives and the lives of those around us better, but it can also be dangerous if we don't use moderation. Stoicism, an ancient philosophy that still speaks to us today with wisdom, teaches us a crucial lesson about the boundaries of kindness. It's good to help others with an open heart, but it can be disappointing to expect the same level of kindness in return. Life often shows us that the good things we do today might not be remembered tomorrow. This isn't a sign of how valuable we are or how valuable our actions are. It's just how people naturally remember and feel grateful for things. Giving something away is like planting a tree. You take good care of it, hoping it will grow and maybe give you shade or fruit one day. Nature does what it does, though. Storms, droughts, and the seasons all happen. In the same way, when we show kindness, we should let go of the expectation of getting something in return. Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher, told us to think about our actions instead of how they turn out. He told us that we can't always control what happens, and that this should remind us that the joy of giving should come from the act itself, not from hoping to get something in return. We are protected from the pain of unfulfilled expectations when we adopt this mindset. It develops our emotional resilience so that we can keep being kind and generous without getting worn out or feeling exploited. This doesn't mean we should make our hearts tough. It means we need to find balance. Do not see the effect of your kindness as a transaction, but as a reflection of who you are. Not only do we protect our peace of mind, but we also grow a kind of generosity that is pure, self-sustaining, and truly satisfying. This stoic principle tells us to give freely but wisely, so that our kindness makes us better no matter what other people do. How can you use the stoic principle of giving without expecting anything in your daily life? Imagine a situation in which you can show kindness or help someone without expecting anything in return. Then, think about what you could do to make sure that your generosity stays a source of joy for you instead of draining you. 3. There are no limits on received requests. When you think about the past, it's interesting to see how much service royalty required, from getting dressed to keeping themselves clean, which was all done by attendants. Now that it's 2019, it's clear that people still expect things from us, and they often ask for favors that they could easily do themselves. Stoicism sheds light on this and teaches us how important it is to set limits and accept moderation. We can use this ancient philosophy as a lighthouse to help us find our way through the sea of endless requests and keep our emotional health. Stoicism isn't about turning down help. It's about finding balance so that we don't lose ourselves while helping others. One moving story is about a mother and her adult daughter who live in a cute town. The mother cared for her daughter so much out of love that she wouldn't let her take care of her duties. This pattern continued until the mother died too soon, which surprised everyone by making the daughter more independent. 
This story shows an important lesson. Even if our intentions are good, giving too much help can stop growth without meaning to. This wisdom was encapsulated by the Stoic Emperor Marcus Aurelius in his meditations. A man's job is to stand upright, not to be kept upright by others. Seneca, who had a lot of knowledge about how people connect with each other, said, He who becomes your friend because of the benefit will also stop because of the benefit. This is a powerful reminder to build relationships based on real connections instead of transactions. Friendship and help shouldn't depend on what we can give each other, but on how much we respect and understand each other. Stoicism teaches us to value ourselves not for what we can do, but for who we are. This builds self-esteem and helps us connect with others in a real way. Stoicism gives us the strength to be moderate, to set limits to protect our own health while still truly helping others. By putting our needs first and responsibilities second, we not only stay true to ourselves, but we also do more meaningful acts of kindness. We can stay true to ourselves and our values and live a good, happy life if we take this balanced approach to life and relationships. Keep in mind that taking care of our own needs is not selfish. It's a necessary part of modern life. 4. Being seen and treated as weak. Stoicism teaches us a lot about self-command and inner resilience. To build a fortress inside, learn how to control yourself and make clear lines in the sand that mark our personal space. Ironically, always going the extra mile for other people can make you look weak over time. When we don't set clear limits, we leave ourselves open to being taken advantage of by people who see our kindness not as a strength, but as a chance to gain something. This cycle of overextending ourselves and taking advantage of others drains us, making us feel unappreciated and overworked. However, things change when we start to firmly say no. We're not the first people people come to with any needs or requests. Being assertive shows that we value our time and energy, which makes others respect us in return. One of the most important figures in Stoic philosophy, Seneca, said it best. What you think of yourself is much more important than what others think of you. By setting limits and being self-disciplined, we not only protect our mental and emotional health, but we also get respect from those around us. Remember that the word no has the power to change things. It shows how much you value yourself and how much respect you expect from others. Adopt this mantra and see how it changes the way your relationships work, promoting respect based on self-worth and dignity. The challenges of implementing this change are real, though. Being available to everyone often brings in people who need help, leaving you out of the spotlight when it's time to celebrate. As a result of being open-hearted, you might miss out on times of happiness and be stuck as a helper, missing out on times of leisure. This painful realization helps us tell the difference between real connections and ones that are just looking for an easy way to make money. Being mindful about who we give our time and energy to is a stoic exercise that helps us see the real value of relationships. You may not know this, but setting boundaries is an important stoic principle that not only makes us happier, but it also makes our relationships better. People often respect us more when we are strong enough to say no. This is a strange but true psychological fact. This contradictory effect shows how self-respect can change things and how important it is to be careful in our relationships. Stoic wisdom not only keeps us from getting burned out, but it also helps us build relationships that are mutually beneficial. Give it a thumbs up if you think you've learned something useful so far. Let's now discuss ways to stay safe from being used by others and from the negative effects of excessive kindness. First, get over your fear of saying no. Think about why the word no often feels so heavy and how it may have come from learning that being nice meant accepting others. Such lessons are deeply ingrained in us from the time we are young and are mixed with a fear of being rejected. 
This creates a belief system that says our worth is equal to being accepted all the time. But the philosophy of Stoicism encourages us to question and break down these deeply held beliefs. It promotes a life of free will rather than one that is controlled by the subtleties of past conditioning. Adults have the freedom to change how they interact with others because they know that the fears they were taught as kids no longer control them. Stoicism gives us the mental tools to look at our feelings and figure out what they mean. This way, we can deal with life's challenges without letting old habits control us. Saying no to requests that cross our boundaries, especially when they hurt our well-being or sense of what's fair, is not only a way to fight old fears, but also a powerful way to show self-respect and independence. But it's important to keep our newfound assertiveness in check by developing our emotional intelligence and empathy. Stoicism doesn't just support self-interest or being alone. It also stresses how important it is to make a positive difference in our community and in the lives of those around us. The philosophy tells us to find a middle ground where we can help and support others without putting our own health at risk. These situations need emotional intelligence because it helps us know when and how to help in a way that is good for both us and the other person. True Stoic wisdom is demonstrated by the ability to recognize the genuine needs of others while also keeping in mind our own limits. It makes sure that our acts of kindness are not only self-disciplined, but also compassionate and understanding. This helps build a society where people respect and help each other. Second tip, pay attention to how you feel. Adopting Stoicism pushes us toward introspection and mindfulness, encouraging us to examine our feelings and thoughts and build mental resilience. This old wisdom tells us to take care of our inner peace by paying attention to how we react and feel, especially when we do kind things. It teaches us that helping others should make us feel good, like how clouds make us feel lighter. On the other hand, feelings of exhaustion, irritation or exploitation mean that you need to change your perspective. It's important to know when our contributions, which aren't required, start to make our serenity lessened. Being honest about how this makes you feel is not lying to yourself. It's a brave act of self-care that keeps our kindness from becoming a source of stress and pain. The third tip is to put yourself first. In the most obscure fields, it's easy to become a master and forget about our own health. Making time for self-care is essential, just like the Stoic virtues of discipline and self-esteem. Stoicism, after all, is good for the soul and teaches us how to be self-sufficient. Instead of neglecting yourself, take care of your physical, emotional and mental health, recognize your presence and make your needs more important. You have to give this approach your full attention, accept yourself completely, Forgive yourself for mistakes you've made in the past and see the coming year as a blank canvas for stoic renewal. Choose something that will only make you happy and use this time to show how much you love yourself. Hold on to your boundaries and don't feel bad about turning down others if their demands come into your sanctuary. Help them as much as you can while making it clear that your own recovery comes first. Fourth, Figure out who will take the risk. Adopting stoic virtues like self-discipline and discernment gives us the power to tell the difference between relationships that make us feel good and ones that make us feel bad. Dealing with people who are always wanting more, whether it's attention, time or resources, is like being a nurturer. We get worn out and our energy is sapped by the insatiable. Stoicism teaches us the importance of inner strength and reminds us that change is a door that can only be opened by the self. It is a mistake to think that we can change other people just by being nice to them. Change that lasts is a personal journey that starts with one's own willpower, not with outside help. This philosophy doesn't encourage being cold-hearted. 
Instead, it supports a balanced way of dealing with relationships. In this dance of give and take, being too generous can leave us empty, while being too cheap can make us feel alone. Stoicism tells us to use our kindness and generosity, but it also tells us to think things through and cut ties when it's best for our health. It's about finding balance and making sure that our acts of kindness don't drain our energy. Remember that the best relationships are ones in which both people grow, not ones in which one person dies so the other can bloom. Stoicism tells us to find a balance and makes us think carefully about what we do and how it affects other people. It stresses how important it is to keep our generosity in check, telling us not to spend all of our money on others at the expense of our main goal, which is to live a happy life. On the other hand, it tells us not to be too careful when we give and instead urges us to be generous but smart about it. Seneca, a great Stoic thinker, said it best. Kindness is a treasure. A benefit should be kept like a buried treasure to be unearthed only in case of necessity. His words remind us to be ready to be kind to others, recognizing the deep bond that exists between all people. Let's do a quick mind exercise before we continue, because this part of the video will undoubtedly change your minds for the better. In this part of the video, there is no judgment. Instead, there is an invitation to awaken a power that most people don't use, the power of your mind and the master of your thoughts. We will look at how to master your mind in a world where many people have trouble with it through the lens and wisdom of Stoicism. Marcus Aurelius said, You have power over your mind, not over outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. Let's look at how to use Marcus's words to get mental strength. Are you all set? Let's get started. 1. Don't care what other people think. Pay attention to your mind instead. One important part of mastering your own mind is letting go of how other people see you. This takes your attention away from the noise of the world and toward the clarity of your own thoughts. The first step on this journey is to realize that the only thing you really control is your mind. It never ceases to amaze me. We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinion than our own, Marcus Aurelius said in a reflection that perfectly captures this sentiment. Imagine a world where any criticism or unasked opinion about the choices you make is drowned out by the sound of your own self-awareness. This isn't about building a wall around your ego. It's about growing a garden in your mind where your own values and beliefs feed the seeds of your thoughts instead of other people's judgments stepping on them. To master your mind, you have to get rid of these outside influences this will let your true self grow without the need for approval from others. Consider the case of a young artist who, despite displaying promising talent, found his sense of self paralyzed by fear of judgment. Every brushstroke was accompanied by the fear of what other people would think until he came across the principles of Stoicism. It took him a while to learn that his worth was based on his own opinion and that criticism was just the surface of a deep ocean of self-confidence. As he turned his attention inward, his art grew into a true reflection of his inner world, free from the fear of being judged. He shows how turning inward can change things, and how true mastery of the mind can be found there. This is not an easy path. You have to constantly fight the urge to look for approval from other people. Still, this discipline is where freedom is found. Stoic philosophy says to focus on what's inside you instead of what's outside you. By focusing on your own mind, you follow this principle. The celebration of your own capacity for judgment, resilience and growth is another aspect of mind mastery, in addition to the reflection of external opinions. To put it simply, Stoicism is a modern philosophy that helps you live your life with peace and strength. Build emotional resilience, number two. A gem cannot be polished without friction, 
nor a man perfected without trials, said Lucius Aeneas Seneca, a famous Stoic philosopher. The second lesson on our path to mind mastery, building emotional resilience, is inspired by this philosophy. In this fast-paced world, getting around is like exploring a dangerous but exciting trail where problems and difficulties are bound to happen every day, just like the sun rising every morning. You may occasionally find yourself caught in the thorny vines of hardships, anxiety or heartbreak as you walk along this never-ending path called life. These are not signs of weakness. They are chances to build a strong, unwavering resilience. Failures that happen along your journey are not just small disappointments. They are valuable lessons that come in the form of temporary defeat. Use the strength you already have to turn every problem into a chance to grow. We understand that it's not easy to do. You were given a dangerous climb, so it makes sense that you would fall apart under its weight. Instead, consider how you could use this adversity to your advantage and lead you closer to your goals. Long-lasting resilience is made up of the bravery and persistence that keep your spirit going through hard times. Emotional resilience. Getting stronger emotionally is like forging steel in fire. Think about the journey of a young business owner whose startup was about to fail because of the economy. He felt down every time he failed, was turned down, or dealt a blow. He kept going anyway, seeing each problem as a lesson in disguise. This person not only made it through the ordeal, but he came out of it stronger, more flexible, and with a better idea of how to move forward. The ability to face adversity head-on and draw strength from it, paving the way for emotional resilience, is exemplified by this story. Mastering your perception of difficulty is the first step in developing emotional resilience. Stoicism teaches you that things that happen or outcomes don't have any inherent good or badness. How we think about these things is what makes us feel and react. Emotional resilience doesn't mean ignoring setbacks or ignoring pain. It means realizing that you have the power and wisdom to understand them in a way that helps you grow as a person and strengthens your inner strength. Accept this wisdom, see how strong you are, and improve the story of your journey by taking control of your mind. Third, use the power of how you see things. You are walking along a familiar path, a regular trail that you have been on many times before. A moment of unexpected chaos in your otherwise well-planned day occurs when your foot slips and you find yourself stumbling. But what if you could train yourself to see the step instead of the drop? This is similar to Epictetus's resolute wisdom, who said, Men are not troubled by things, but by the view they have of things. Perception is like a window to the outside world. It helps us understand what we see. It's simple to forget that we can change how we see the world around us, especially when things are hard or unclear. When life throws you into rough seas, it doesn't always mean you're going to drown. It could just mean you're being given a chance to learn how to swim. You should steer your mind toward thoughts that help you instead of ones that hurt you, like an experienced captain guiding a ship through a storm. For instance, if your work presentation didn't go as planned, don't see it as a failure. Rather, see it as a valuable lesson that improves your ability and resilience for future tasks. This doesn't mean ignoring difficulties or skimming over mistakes. It means acknowledging them without letting them define your sense of self or your abilities. To really get good at this art of perception, you need to be patient and practice a lot. Perception is like a muscle. The more you work on controlling it, the stronger it gets. As a habit, question negative points of view and replace them with ones that make you feel good. Over time, this process goes from being something you do once in a while to being an automatic part of your minds that helps you master your mind. There is wisdom in choosing how to handle the falls and stumbles that happen in life. We can turn problems into opportunities by understanding and using our mental lens, which is the power to see things differently. 
When trouble arises, picture yourself as a wrestler whom the logos, like a trainer, has paired with a rough young man. This reminds us of the Stoic saying, the real man is revealed in difficult times. Think of every mistake you make as a learning opportunity that will help you take control of your mind. 4. Follow what nature tells you to do. Have you ever been through something that threw your inner compass off, like being fired without warning, losing a loved one suddenly, or getting turned down for a job? Remember what Marcus Aurelius said, Life is nothing but change, and change is nature's delight. This ties in with the fourth lesson of our journey to master our minds. Do what nature says. Uncertainty and change are necessary for life, but they are not necessarily harmful to tranquility. On the contrary, these sudden changes in the wind of fate give us chances to adapt and grow. When you don't know what will happen, don't freeze up in despair or let fear cloud your judgment. Instead, move forward with the knowledge that change is a normal part of life. We can navigate life's turbulent undercurrents with serenity if we align ourselves with nature's ebbs and flows. Do we curse the skies if Mother Nature lets it rain on a sunny day or throws a storm into a clear night sky? We don't think so because we know that everything is natural and out of our control. This is how we should deal with life's rough waves. Accept them and adapt with resilience. You can experience a level of tranquility and empowerment that is unmatched by accepting the flow of life and sailing with the tides of change. Nature and life itself are not things that we can change to fit our needs. Instead, we need to learn how to flow with them naturally and gracefully without losing sight of who we are. 5. Be disciplined with yourself. Think about your life so far and how it has changed you. You've probably come across distractions that made you want to go off track, like wanting to binge watch your favorite show instead of studying for an exam or having one too many slices of that delicious cake while you're trying to stay on track with your diet. The nobility of their ambitions and the strength of their self-discipline was a thought that the great Stoic philosopher Seneca had. This is a beautiful reflection of another important lesson in mastering your mind. Practice self-discipline. To become self-masterful, we must first understand and admit how important self-discipline is for protecting our life goals. It's the shield that keeps us from losing our valuable time and energy to other things. It's like a skilled gardener who always takes care of a huge number of colorful flower beds. It doesn't matter how pretty those rose bushes are, they'll take just as much care of their tulips and sunflowers. How then does one cultivate such minds? Pay close attention to times when temptations try to steer you wrong. When you see these things, don't look at them with a harsh eye of judgment. Instead, see them as normal parts of life. When you know what distracts you from your path, it's easier to come up with ways to stop these distractions. Like a gardener who grows different flowers, you need to be able to see and deal with each distraction with unwavering determination. From avoiding the temptations we face in our personal lives to building mental toughness for work, self-discipline is without a doubt one of the most important building blocks of mind mastery. When you feel like giving up or giving in to temptation is strong, remember Epictetus's wise words. No great thing is created suddenly. Practicing self-discipline is the same way. It's a journey that never ends and requires constant attention and effort. Sixth, enjoy the present moment. Have you ever been so caught up in thinking about a regret or a worry that you forgot to enjoy the beauty of the moment and the sunset? Too often, people have the flaw of being physically here, but mentally somewhere else. Marcus Aurelius once said, Do not let the panorama of your life oppress you. Do not dwell on all the different problems that may have happened in the past or may happen in the future. Just think about the present and what can fix it. We should try to enjoy life as it happens 
one precious moment at a time. Every breath we take and every feeling we have should bring us back to the present moment. Don't think about a finished chapter in the past or an unwritten chapter in the future. These thoughts take away from the power and beauty of living in and enjoying the present. Instead of dwelling on things that are out of your control, enjoy the present and apply your energy to making it better in the here and now. Time doesn't wait for anyone and it always slips through our fingers, leaving us walking a thin line between our memories of the past and our hopes for the future. To find the real power of life, though, we have to realize that right now is all we have. Let yourself enjoy every sunrise and every compliment you get. Enjoy every cup of coffee you drink and fully engage yourself in every conversation. Enjoy every single moment of the present. It's not enough to just accept what's happening right now. You have to actively immerse yourself in it. It's about enjoying every part of today without letting the shadows of yesterday or the unknowns of tomorrow dim its light. At the moment, it's about getting hungry. So, live as if you were already living for the second time and as if you had acted the first time as wrongly as you are about to act now, says Seneca. Mastering your mind begins with mastering this very moment. Follow this philosophy and be amazed at how it can change you as you work to become mentally strong. Seventh, make or join a group of people who can help you grow. A hiker by himself or herself climbing the highest cliff in the middle of a forest that never ends. The view from above might be beautiful, but the journey by yourself can be very quiet and, well, by yourself. Now, instead of that lone hiker, think of a group of explorers on the same trip. The ordeal seems a lot less scary now, doesn't it? In his timeless Stoic wisdom, Marcus Aurelius said, Mankind are made for each other, either to teach them better or bear with them. This is a very important lesson for mastering your mind. Communities are supportive places where people with similar interests and values can learn from each other. You can increase the collective force behind each step toward your goals by collaborating with people who have the same goals in mind as you do. An uplifting community is one where people can teach and learn, be inspired and be inspired, and be motivated and be motivated. Let's leave the realm of metaphors for a moment and go on this trip. You see a chance to join a book club. Don't think twice. Just do it. You'll be intellectually satisfied and help other people do the same. You meet other people on this journey to mental mastery and you decide to work together with them. As important as it is to grow as a person, it's also important to help others. Building or being a part of communities that support each other's growth is good for everyone. It helps you grow personally and also helps the group move forward. Seneca tells us, associate with people who are likely to make you better. In the end, you are empowering yourself while empowering others on their own mental mastery journey, a sign of our progress together on this path of life. Have you ever thought about what makes some people smarter and better at learning than others? Want to get the skills and information you need to do well in your personal and professional life? You're in the right place if so. Here, we'll talk about how to be smarter than everyone else. We'll look at strategies and tips that can help you learn better, understand better, and use what you know in your everyday life. This journey will give you the tools you need to make the most of your intelligence, which is a valuable asset that can improve every part of your life. So, if you want to reach your full intellectual potential and take on challenges with a clear head, please keep watching. We're going to look at these 10 keys together. They will help you become smarter and do better in any area you choose. Get ready for a journey that will help you learn more about yourself and grow intellectually. First, encourage people to be curious. To grow your curiosity is like starting a spark of intelligence. Think of your curiosity as a compass that leads you through huge amounts of information. 
by being curious all the time, you become someone who is always ready to find answers, which is one way to be smarter than other people. You are a college student and you are learning about history in class. You have never heard of this subject in ancient history before your professor brought it up. There's no longer a passive way for you to take in the information from the teacher. You display interest during class. You inquire about what led to and resulted from events in this history. You wonder why people in the past behaved the way they did. And you even wonder how this event might have affected the world we live in now. You're still interested in more. You start reading more books and other materials about this subject after class. To find out more about this old history, you search online and take part in online discussions. This will not only help you understand this subject better, but it will also help you see history and its relevance to our present lives in a bigger picture. Your interest has led you to learn new things and broaden your views, which has made you smarter about how to understand and interact with the world around you. If you're interested, you'll ask why and how things work, instead of just accepting them as they are. It makes you want to learn more, question what you think you know, and question what you believe without question. You are broadening your intellectual horizons with every question you ask and every new thing you learn. Curiosity helps us find out about the world's wonders, from the secrets of the universe to the mysteries of our own bodies and minds. But it's not just about gathering information, it's also about really understanding it. Being curious helps you see beyond the obvious and make connections between things that don't seem to go together. So how do you get more interested? First, look at the world around you as if it were brand new. Check things out and ask questions if you don't understand them. Open yourself up to new things all the time. Read books about a wide range of topics and learn about other cultures. Remember that interest is what starts the fire of learning. You are already smarter than other people because you are taking care of it. Number two, reading a lot of different kinds of books is a great way to improve your knowledge and intelligence. When you read a lot, it's like opening a treasure chest full of information, experiences and thoughts. When you read a lot, you imagine yourself traveling to faraway places. You can access knowledge that has been gathered over many generations and from many different cultures. The wisdom of people who lived hundreds of years ago can be accessed through reading. Books cover a lot of ground, from history and science to philosophy and fiction. Every page offers a chance for learning, reflection and perspective expansion. Reading makes you smarter, whether you're reading about the complexities of quantum physics, the complexities of human relationships in a novel, or the mysteries of ancient civilizations. Reading also helps you build your vocabulary and language skills, which are important for communicating clearly and getting your point across. It makes you think critically and use your imagination. It helps you understand how people from different cultures feel and see the world in new ways. A lot of important people in history were voracious readers who got ideas and inspiration from books. By doing what they did, you can find new ways to use your intelligence and get ahead of the competition. Reading a lot is not only a habit, but also a way to learn new things and expand your horizons. Before you start this reading journey, you should make a list of books on a wide range of topics. Reading books, articles or blogs about things that interest you is a good place to start. This could be art, history, business, science or something else. The important thing is to make sure that your list is varied and full of different things so that you can find new ideas and information. Once you have a list of books to read, set aside time every day or every week to read. You should see this time as a valuable chance to think about and learn from the works you've chosen. Let yourself learn from the books and other materials you come across and enjoy the process. Joining book clubs or discussion groups is another way to get even more out of reading a lot. 
This will help you connect with people who share your interests and have deep conversations about what you've read. You can share your thoughts and opinions, and you can also learn from what other people have to say. It's also a great way to find new books and get suggestions from other readers who really love reading. Large amounts of reading are a great way to stand out from the crowd and gain a lot of knowledge in a world full of it. It will help you get smarter than everyone else. Use the variety and depth of literature to improve yourself and your thinking by feeding your soul with books and ideas all the time. Number three, it's important to keep a growth mindset. Maintaining a mindset is one of the most important things you can do to keep growing smart over the course of your life. This comes from a strong belief that your skills, knowledge and awareness can naturally get better as you work hard, learn and keep at it. Instead of avoiding situations where you might fail or have trouble, keeping this mindset helps you embrace challenges and difficulties as learning opportunities. You go into them with courage and determination, believing that failing is a normal part of learning and not a reflection of your abilities. You are more likely to embrace innovation and make the most of your current skills if you keep your minds open. This could mean learning new things, expanding your knowledge in different areas, and getting better at the things you already know how to do. Being open to constructive feedback is a big part of continuing to grow intellectually. Instead of seeing feedback as something that could hurt your self-esteem, you see it as a chance to learn and grow. Your point of view is very valuable and you know that the people around you can teach you a world of wisdom. Let's say you are a young person who is in school and working on your career. You get the results of an important test one day and you failed. You choose to see this failure as a chance to learn and grow instead of giving up and feeling insecure. You don't give up or avoid that subject. Instead, you choose to learn from your flaws and mistakes. To get better at that subject, you make a new study plan, look for useful learning materials and work harder to learn more and get better at it. Because you have a growth mindset, you not only get over failing, but you also get better at what you do. You discover that yourself is becoming stronger, more flexible and better able to deal with challenges in the future. Having a growth mindset is a journey that lasts a lifetime and requires commitment, dedication and persistence. It means taking on challenges, looking for ways to grow and always trying to reach your full potential. With this mindset, you set yourself up for lifelong learning and intellectual growth. You're making room for new opportunities and broadening your views. Remember that your intelligence is not something that stays the same. It is something that changes over time. You can reach amazing intellectual heights and do amazing things you never thought possible if you have a growth mindset. 4. Accept failure and use it to learn. If you want to be smarter than other people, you need to accept that failure is a part of the way to success. It's possible to gain useful insights, learn from your mistakes, and get stronger when you fail. Failure is not a setback. It is a way to move forward. Failure teaches us something, gives us a chance to think, and gives us a chance to get better. Let's say you are an entrepreneur who wants to start a new business. You face many challenges and setbacks in the beginning stages. Your product might not satisfy the needs of the market. Your marketing plan might not work to draw in customers. Or you might be having financial difficulties. You don't give up. Instead, you keep going and learn from your mistakes. You look at what went wrong, figure out what could be done better, and then change how you do things. You get useful experience, improve your business model, and eventually become successful by following this process. Resilience, humility, and courage are necessary for accepting failure. It means being honest about your flaws, willing to listen to feedback, and ready to change. When you accept failure, you liberate yourself from the fear of making mistakes and allow it to take risks. 
you think of new, creative, and flexible ideas more often. Accepting failure also helps you develop a growth mindset, which means you see challenges as chances to learn and improve. Do not forget that failure is not the opposite of success. It is an important part of it. You are not only smarter than other people when you accept failure and learn from it, but you are also setting yourself up for future success. Number five, learn how to think critically. Critical thinking means being able to look at, judge, and make sense of information in a way that is fair and makes sense. It helps you question what you think you know, see things from different points of view, and make smart choices. To get a better understanding of complicated issues and solve problems effectively, you need to work on your critical thinking skills. It means having an open mind, being skeptical, and being intellectually interested. Let's say you are a student doing a project for school. When you get information from different sources that doesn't agree with each other, it can be hard to tell which ones you can trust. You choose to use critical thinking skills instead of taking things at face value. You carefully judge the reliability of each source by looking at things like the expertise of the author, the reputation of the publication, and the evidence given. You also have to look at the arguments, find any mistakes in logic, and decide if the conclusions are valid. By doing this, you can tell the difference between information that you can trust and information that you can't. This will help you write a well-thought-out research project that is based on evidence. To improve your critical thinking skills, you need to be intellectually humble, ready to admit when you're wrong, and willing to change your mind if new information comes along. Being intellectually honest, avoiding biases, and trying to think about all the relevant information before coming to a conclusion are also important. Learning how to think critically makes you a smarter and more analytical thinker who can handle the complicated world we live in with ease and confidence. You have more information to help you make smart choices, solve problems, and make a meaningful contribution to society. In conclusion, one of the most important things you can do to get smarter is to learn how to think critically. It gives you the power to think more clearly, reason better, and connect with the world around you in deeper ways. Take on the challenge of improving your critical thinking skills today to reach your full intellectual potential. Sixth, learn how to listen actively. Active listening is an important skill for getting things done and growing as a person. It means giving the speaker your full attention, listening carefully, and trying to see things from their point of view. To listen actively, you need to understand, be patient, and keep an open mind. Giving the speaker your full attention means being in the present moment and putting other things aside. Let's say you are in a group discussion with other people from work. You can tell that some of your co-workers are not paying attention when one of them talks about their thoughts on a certain subject. They are looking at their phones, drawing, or having conversations on the side. You don't want to be like them, so you choose to listen actively. You look at the person speaking and nod every so often to show that you are paying attention. By not cutting the speaker off or adding your own thoughts, you let them say what they want to say. You also ask clarifying questions and rewrite important points to make sure you fully understand their point of view. By actively listening, you show that you respect the other person and make it easier for people to talk and share their ideas. Listening actively means not only understanding what someone says, but also how they feel and what they want to say. You have to be willing to understand, care about, and see things from the speaker's point of view. You can improve your communication, make your relationships stronger, and learn a lot about other people's thoughts and feelings by practicing active listening. You also become a more thoughtful and caring person who can make meaningful connections and work together with others. In conclusion, Active listening is a skill that you need to improve your mind and yourself.
It helps you connect with others more deeply, see things from different angles, and understand the world better. So, resolve to use active listening in all of your daily interactions and see how your relationships and mind grow. Number seven, learn how to solve problems. Solving problems is an important part of being smart and learning. In order to achieve the desired results, it entails identifying challenges, considering potential solutions, and putting effective plans into action. To get better at solving problems, you need to be creative, persistent, and willing to take risks. It means looking at problems with a positive outlook and believing that you can get past them. So let's say you have a tough problem at work. Your team is having a hard time meeting a short deadline and it doesn't look like there's a way out. You choose to use your problem-solving skills instead of giving up or feeling overwhelmed. You get your team members together to come up with ideas and figure out different ways to do things. You promote open communication and creative thinking by looking at things from different points of view and questioning what people think they know. By working together and trying new things, you can come up with a strategic plan of action and make good use of your resources to solve the problem. The challenges are thus overcome and you succeed within the allotted time. To get better at solving problems, you need to practice, be persistent and be ready to learn from your mistakes. It means being able to change how you do things and being open to feedback and new ideas. You become more resourceful, creative and resilient in the face of adversity when you improve your problem-solving abilities. Additionally, you feel more capable of meeting challenges and achieving your objectives. In conclusion, learning how to solve problems is important for both personal and professional growth. It helps you get past problems, take advantage of chances, and confidently move through the complicated world we live in today. Take on the challenge of getting better at solving problems and you'll see your intelligence and accomplishments soar to new heights. Eighth, encourage creativity and new ideas. Innovation and creativity are what keep intellectual progress and growth going. They require you to think outside the box, question the status quo, and come up with new ideas and solutions. To encourage creativity and new ideas, you need to keep an open mind, be ready to take risks, and be dedicated to finding out what else is out there. It has to do with letting go of the limits of common sense and embracing the unknown. What if you are an artist who is making a new painting? You choose to try out new mediums and styles instead of sticking to the ones you already know how to do. You let go of ideas you already have about what art should be like and let your imagination soar. You find new ways to express yourself and make a masterpiece that moves and inspires other people when you try new things and look into them. To encourage creativity and innovation, you need to make a space that supports curiosity, encourages experimentation and values different points of view. The goal is to create an environment where people work together and share their ideas and everyone feels like they can contribute and find new opportunities. You can reach your full creative potential and encourage others to do the same by encouraging creativity and new ideas. You also bring about good change and transformation. Your big ideas and forward-looking thinking shape the future. In conclusion, encouraging creativity and new ideas is important for both personal and societal growth. It helps you break free from the status quo, push the limits of what is possible, and make a better future for yourself and others. So, take on the challenge of making your life more creative and innovative, and watch as your mind and impact continue to grow. Building a love of learning is the ninth tip. Building a love of learning is one of the most important things you can do to improve your mind and stay smart throughout your life. It means being interested, eager, and driven to learn new things and improve your skills. To develop a love of learning, you need to keep an open mind, be eager to learn, 
and be dedicated to improving yourself. Seeing learning as a journey rather than a goal and enjoying the search for knowledge are important parts of this book. Let's say you are a student getting ready for a test. You decide not to see studying as a chore and instead approach it with interest and excitement. You look for new information and ways to learn and you consider different points of view and ideas. You also push yourself to think critically and creatively by using what you've learned to solve problems and deal with situations in the real world. Because you love learning, you understand the material better and pick up useful skills that you can use outside of school. Being proactive and self-directed in your learning is important if you want to develop a love of learning. Being proactive, setting goals and looking for ways to improve and grow are all important parts of this. If you develop a love of learning, you will keep looking for new challenges and experiences to broaden your knowledge throughout your life. You also become more flexible, strong and able to confidently and clearly navigate the complicated world we live in today. To sum up, developing a love of learning is important for both intellectual growth and personal happiness. It helps you reach your full potential, follow your dreams and live a life with meaning and purpose. So, enjoy the process of learning and you will see your intelligence and growth opportunities grow. Tenth, surround yourself with people who have different points of view. Surrounding yourself with people who have different points of view is important for both intellectual and personal growth. It means looking for people with different experiences, backgrounds and points of view and having an open and honest conversation with them. To surround yourself with different points of view, you need to be humble, empathetic and have an open mind. It means realizing that everyone has something useful to offer and that you can learn from other people's experiences and ideas. It's possible that you are working on a project with people from different cultures. You don't stick to the same old ways of thinking and doing things. Instead, you choose to value the different points of view on your team. You ask your teammates for feedback and actively encourage them to share their thoughts and ideas. You also pay close attention to what they have to say and try to understand their points of view and experiences. You can use your team's collective wisdom to come up with new solutions that are based on different points of view by working together and talking to each other. To surround yourself with different points of view, you need to leave your comfort zone and be open to talking to people who are different from you. It's about removing obstacles and building bridges, promoting empathy and understanding, and making society more fair and open to everyone. When you surround yourself with people who have different points of view, you broaden your horizons, test your assumptions, and see more of the world. You also grow more caring and understanding, which makes you better able to make relationships stronger and change the world for the better. Surrounding yourself with people who have different points of view is important for intellectual growth and societal progress. It helps people from different backgrounds understand and care about each other better by broadening their horizons and challenging their assumptions. So, look for chances to interact with people who are not like you and you will see your knowledge and influence grow. How would you like to live your life? Even though this question seems simple, it gets to the heart of who we are and forces us to face the cycles of mediocrity, disappointment and overthinking that have trapped generations in a web of unrealized potential. This quiet time to think about yourself is where the path to greatness starts. Not by making big promises or setting lofty goals, but by making a deep, unwavering promise to yourself. A promise to change, to grow, and to break out of the never-ending cycle that has trapped us. Stoic philosophers, who had a deep understanding of what it means to be human, gave us a way to get through this dangerous terrain by following the timeless wisdom of Stoicism. Epictetus said, First, say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. 
which sums up the main idea of Stoic philosophy. This is about aligning our very selves with the virtues of wisdom, courage, justice and temperance, not just about defining our goals. This is an action call and a reminder that greatness is not given, but made through the choices and actions we make every day. In this way, Stoicism is not just accepting what happens, it is an active participation in life, a promise to live by the values we value, even when our lives are chaotic and under a lot of pressure. There will be setbacks, disappointments, and a lot of overthinking on the way to becoming a great person. The Stoics said that the first step to becoming great is to think about yourself and tell yourself what you want to become. But this isn't just about making plans or goals. It's about figuring out how to be the kind of man you really want to be in line with nature and virtue. You have to picture the version of your character who always does the right thing, no matter what the world's chaos, pressures and temptations are like. By Stoic philosophy, this is the real start of a committed life, where all of your thoughts and actions are in line with this better version of yourself. Let this be our rallying cry to break free from the chains that hold us back and to rise with courage and conviction and build a legacy of excellence that goes beyond the limits of our past. When we take mindful steps, make decisions with purpose, and face challenges with unwavering resolve, we not only set ourselves up for success, but we also encourage those around us to start their own journey of change. Let's say goodbye to mediocrity and take a bold step into a future full of opportunity, meaning, and unmatched success. The first lesson is that perception is reality and inner peace is based on this. The first and maybe most important thing that Stoicism teaches us is how powerful our thoughts are. Being able to stay focused on our inner compass is very important in a world full of distractions and outside pressures. We have the power to challenge the status quo, rise above mediocrity and make a way for greatness when we are in charge of our thoughts and feelings. The first step to breaking out of the cycle of mediocrity and becoming a great person is to realize that our perceptions have the power to change our reality. We give ourselves the tools we need to handle life's challenges with poise and resilience by adopting the stoic principles of emotional mastery, reason and focus. This path isn't simple and there are things that could get in the way. However, we grow and change as a result of the challenges we face. We can choose to see challenges as insurmountable obstacles or as chances for development and learning at any given time. This choice, which may not seem important by itself, has a big impact on the course of our lives. We can prepare for the ups and downs of life by adopting the stoic practice of seeing challenges as opportunities for growth. This change doesn't just affect how we think about life, it also changes how we actually live it. We stop seeing each day as a set of problems that need to be solved and start seeing it as a chance to practice good qualities like patience, resilience and courage. This lesson challenges us to rethink how we relate to the world, despite its straightforward wording and revolutionary implications. The idea behind it is that our minds are where real battles happen that make us great. Breaking the cycle of mediocrity starts with how we see things. To do this, we need to not only understand stoic principles, but also be resolute in our efforts to live by them in every part of our lives. Lesson 2. Becoming stronger by accepting what happens is called resilience. Stoicism is a powerful way to learn how to accept fate and break out of the cycle of mediocrity, disappointment and overthinking that often gets in the way of our success. This old philosophy says that we can choose how to react to things that happen to us, even if we can't change the things themselves. Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius tells us to accept that everything that happens to us is part of the universe's larger, more rational order. Accept the things that fate binds you.
he says, emphasizing how important it is to accept our situations with courage and tranquility. This acceptance is not a passive giving up. It is an active participation in life. Accepting fate is more than just putting up with life's ups and downs. It means recognizing where we are now and striving for excellence within those limits. It means actively appreciating them as important parts of our growth. This viewpoint challenges us to see every setback and disappointment as a chance to put virtues like patience, resilience and perseverance into practice. Because of this, we change how we feel about failure so that we don't see it as the end, but as a step towards success. This change in how people think is very important for breaking the cycles of hopelessness and underachievement that last for generations. Failure teaches us that our power is not in avoiding it, but in how we deal with it, which helps us develop a mindset that is focused on learning and getting better all the time. In addition, this lesson from Stoicism tells us to stop overthinking, which stops us from acting and makes us unhappy. Life's challenges can be handled in a balanced way if we accept our fate and work hard within our sphere of influence. Finding this balance between accepting things as they are and taking action is what will help us reach our goals and reach our full potential. It keeps us from getting stuck in analysis paralysis and lets us move forward even when we don't know what will happen. Using this stoic wisdom in our daily lives builds up our resilience, which not only helps us deal with the challenges of our own journeys, but also frees us from the limits that previous generations put on us, creating a plan for a future filled with accomplishments, happiness and win. The third lesson is about using the power of the present moment. To break out of the cycle of mediocrity, disappointment and overthinking, you have to be deeply involved with the present moment. Stoicism teaches us the importance of living in the present moment, not as a way to avoid facing life's challenges, but as a way to do so with clarity and focus. Seneca, a famous Stoic philosopher, said, True happiness is to enjoy the present without worrying about the future. This wisdom encourages us to change our focus from what was or what might be to what is. We can free our minds from the web of overthinking that keeps us stuck in imagined futures and past regrets by focusing on the present. This lets us act decisively and effectively. To embrace the present moment is not just to passively acknowledge it, it means to actively interact with it. As a Stoic, we must carefully watch our thoughts, actions and feelings to figure out which ones we can change and which ones we have to accept. Becoming more aware of the many chances we have at all times to be good, make progress toward our goals and make the changes we want to see in our lives is possible when we are mindful. We can break the cycles of mediocrity that have ruled our lives and generations by acting in the present. Every moment gives you a choice. Give in to the old patterns of disappointment and inaction, or rise with purpose and action. Being present also teaches us how to walk the thin line between wanting more and being happy with what we have. Even though Stoicism tells us to strive for excellence, it also tells us not to tie our happiness to reaching future goals. We can develop a sense of satisfaction that isn't saved for a future success, but is felt right now by finding value in the process, in the small steps we take every day. This method lessens the disappointment that comes from not getting what you wanted and the paralysis that comes from thinking too much about all the possible outcomes. We can change our reality, develop resilience against the tides of mediocrity and pave the way for long-term success as we learn to live fully in each moment. The fourth lesson is about the virtues of self-reflection and always getting better. Stoicism introduces the crucial practices of self-reflection and ongoing improvement in the effort to break the cycle of mediocrity, disappointment and overthinking. 
Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher, says that we should think about and reflect on our actions and thoughts every day. He says that self-reflection is the only way to see our true selves, without the chaos and confusion of the outside world getting in the way. This practice of self-reflection is a powerful way to find the patterns and habits that hold us back and keep us unhappy and unfulfilled. When we regularly think about our actions and choices and how they relate to our core values and goals, we start a process of continuous personal evolution. With each reflection, we get closer to our ideal selves. Self-reflection isn't just a way to find flaws or shortcomings, though. It's also a way to really improve yourself. It means putting our egos aside, being humble and honest about our character and actions, and being ready to admit when we fall short of our stoic ideals. We have to be open and brave during this process because it forces us to face painful truths about ourselves. Still, it is in this discomfort that we grow. We develop the virtues of wisdom, justice, courage and temperance when we accept our flaws and work to improve our character. When we follow these virtues, they show us the way out of mediocrity and toward excellence. Also, the Stoic practice of self-reflection teaches us to stop thinking too much by directing our thoughts toward positive self-evaluation and taking steps to get better. We learn not to be afraid of making bad choices. Instead, we make the best choices we have access to at the time, learn from the results, and improve the way we make decisions over time. We develop a proactive mindset through this ongoing cycle of action, reflection, and change, which helps us move toward our goals with clarity and purpose. When we make this a regular part of our lives, we not only break free from mediocrity, but we also start a lifelong journey of personal growth and fulfillment, building a legacy of success that goes beyond the limits of our past. Lesson 5. Learn how to be disciplined and control yourself. Strive for discipline and self-control. These stoic virtues will help you get past deep-seated patterns of mediocrity, disappointment and overthinking. These virtues are necessary to develop a mindset and way of life that will lead to success and happiness. One of the most important figures in Stoic thought, Epictetus, says that the way to freedom is not to seek freedom itself, but to develop discipline and self-control. This seemingly contradictory wisdom says that controlling your actions and desires is the first step to having real control over your life and its outcomes. By following strict rules in our daily actions, thoughts and routines, we give ourselves the tools we need to break free from the chains of laziness and procrastination that keep us from reaching our goals. In the Stoic sense, discipline is more than just following rules or schedules without question. It's about putting yourself in a state of balance that fits with your values and goals. It takes work to pick the harder right over the easier wrong, to wait for bigger rewards instead of smaller ones, and to stay focused when life is full of distractions. Our ability to self-regulate and organize ourselves is what helps us handle life's challenges with grace and direct our efforts effectively toward our goals. That being said, self-control is the skill of managing your feelings and wants in a way that helps your progress instead of getting in the way. It means having the inner strength to resist temptations in the short term in order to achieve long-term success. Also, learning discipline and self-control is a powerful way to treat the problem of overthinking. When we train ourselves to act quickly and with purpose, we leave less room for the doubt and indecision that make us think too much. This proactive approach to life promotes an action-oriented mindset over a ruminative one. The person making decisions does not do so out of fear or anxiety, but from a place of strength and clarity. Not only do these stoic virtues help us break out of the cycle of mediocrity, 
but they also show us what is possible in our lives when we are disciplined and self-controlled. Lesson 6. The power of adaptability and accepting change helps you plan a path to success that is both meaningful and long-lasting. To break the cycle of being average, being let down, and overthinking, and to be successful, one must use the Stoic virtue of adaptability. The Stoics, who had a deep understanding of how unpredictable life is, advocated accepting change as a way to develop resilience and grow. Seneca, a great figure in Stoic philosophy, said that being too set in our plans or expectations can cause us to suffer and be frustrated. He instead pushed for a flexible approach to life's challenges, telling us to change our plans and ways of thinking when things change. We can handle the difficulties of life with grace because we are able to adapt. We can turn setbacks into chances to learn and grow. In the Stoic sense, Adaptability does not imply laziness or a lack of ambition. Rather, it denotes a dynamic engagement with the present moment, equipped with the wisdom to recognize what is within our control and the serenity to accept what is not. By making our minds open to change, we can break free from the paralyzing grip of overthinking and the disappointment of having our hopes and dreams not come true. We can change direction when we need to, and look for new ways to act that are in line with our long-term goals and core values. This willingness to change and grow is what will help us get past the shackles of mediocrity and find a way to success that can adapt to the ups and downs of life. Accepting change also encourages a culture of new ideas and creativity which are important for striving for excellence. We develop a resilience that is impervious to the fear of failing when we see every new challenge as an opportunity to learn and adapt. People around us are more likely to adopt the same mindset, which is good for our own personal and professional growth. As we learn to handle life's ups and downs with ease and confidence, we show others how to break free from cycles of disappointment and not achieving their goals. Not only do we succeed, but we also help move society toward one that is more flexible, strong, and successful. Seventh lesson, why setting limits and making lists are important. Learning how to set clear boundaries and prioritize effectively is a crucial part of overcoming the cycle of mediocrity, disappointment, and overthinking. This is a stoic practice. Stoicism, which stresses living in harmony with nature and focusing on what's important, teaches us how important it is to know the difference between what really matters and what doesn't. In his meditations, Marcus Aurelius tells us to focus our minds on what we can control. He suggests that we direct our actions, thoughts and energies toward the things that are most important to us. With this method, we have to carefully consider our commitments and choose to only do things that are in line with our core values and help us reach our long-term goals. By putting limits on our time and energy, we keep ourselves from getting caught up in things that will only make us mediocre. Prioritizing is more than just getting rid of things that aren't important. It's also about choosing where to put our attention and energy to get the most out of them and feel the most fulfilled. According to this stoic principle, we should live our lives on purpose, making choices that will lead us to success. To do this, we have to say no to some opportunities and tasks, not out of fear or laziness, but because we know our resources are limited and need to be used wisely. Setting priorities helps us deal with the demands of life with clarity and purpose, making sure that the things we do help us grow personally and professionally. This structured way of living also helps people who can't make decisions because it gives them a clear framework for doing so. It's easier to make decisions when we know what's important to us and what our limits are. This clarity clears out the mental clutter that often keeps us from making decisions and putting things off letting us move forward with confidence. 
Setting limits and making lists of things to do helps us live a life with meaning and excellence, breaking the cycle of mediocrity and laying the groundwork for long-term success. This lesson from Stoicism not only helps us reach our goals, but it also makes sure that we do so with wisdom, self-respect and peace of mind. Lesson 8. Using failure as a building block for success. Changing how we feel about failure is a key part of breaking out of the cycle of mediocrity, disappointment and overthinking. Stoicism teaches us to see failure not as a setback, but as a necessary part of success by taking a practical approach to life's challenges. Marcus Aurelius's reflective writings tell us to gather wisdom from our mistakes and see each one as a chance to improve ourselves and our plans. From a Stoic point of view, we can shift our attention from the fear of failing to the fact that every attempt is a chance to learn. When we accept that failure is a necessary and valuable part of the path to excellence, we free ourselves from the crippling grip of overthinking and the crippling fear of making mistakes. This shift in perspective is necessary to break out of the cycles of mediocrity and disappointment that trap people who don't dare leave their comfort zones. Engaging with failure in a constructive way also builds resilience, which is a quality that is necessary for long-term success. The Stoic practice of premeditatio malorum, or thinking about bad things that might happen, helps us be calm and determined when things go wrong. It helps us prepare for problems and setbacks, not so we can dwell on them, but so we can come up with ways to get past them. This proactive approach makes sure that when we fail, we don't give up, but are instead ready to look at what went wrong, learn from it, and move on with more strength and understanding. When we see failure as a stepping stone instead of a problem, it changes our path to success into a journey of constant growth and self-improvement. Achieving great things and being happy is possible by breaking the cycle of mediocrity. Lesson 9. Adopting the Stoic principle of being self-sufficient is a key to success. The Stoic principle of self-sufficiency is deeply intertwined with the process of overcoming the cycle of mediocrity, disappointment and overthinking. Stoicism teaches that the only way to truly be free and powerful is to depend on yourself for happiness and satisfaction instead of looking for it in other people's approval or accomplishments. This idea, supported by philosophers like Seneca and Epictetus, advises us to build an inner fortress of strength and peace from which we can draw resilience and inspiration. By working on being self-sufficient, we give ourselves the tools to handle life's ups and downs calmly making sure that our happiness and success are not dependent on how things change in the outside world. To break free from the chains of mediocrity, this shift in mindset is essential. It takes us away from the never-ending search for external rewards and toward a more meaningful, virtue-driven life. A sense of clarity and purpose that is crucial for overcoming overthinking and indecision is also fostered by the practice of self-sufficiency. When we know that we have everything we need to be happy and successful, it's easier to make choices. We are less likely to be swayed by other people's thoughts and expectations, and more likely to follow the paths that are in line with our own true values and goals. Being able to think and act on your own is a big part of making a successful life that goes beyond the mediocrity that societal norms and personal insecurities force on you. Through the stoic practice of self-sufficiency, we not only gain the courage to define success on our own terms, but we also gain the resilience to support it in the face of setbacks. Tenth Lesson how to get past being stuck in analysis by taking mindful action. In order to break out of the cycle of mediocrity, disappointment and overthinking, Stoicism offers the idea of mindful action which can change everything. This principle emphasizes how important it is to make decisions 
and work on tasks with full awareness and purpose, rather than letting regrets from the past or worries about the future take our attention away. Marcus Aurelius is a famous example of the Stoic philosophy. This way of life says that we should do everything with a clear mind and a clear focus, so that our energy is directed toward meaningful goals. This kind of mindfulness in action helps us get over the paralysis that comes from overthinking. It frees us from the chains of not making a decision or putting things off, which keep us stuck in a life of mediocrity. By making it a habit to be fully present in our activities, we not only become more efficient and effective, but we also get more pleasure from them. Additionally, practicing mindful action helps us feel more connected to our duties and tasks, which leads to a more enriching and satisfying level of engagement. This stoic way of thinking lessens the disappointment and disillusionment that come up when our actions don't match up with our values. Making sure our actions are in line with our strongest beliefs makes each step a reflection of who we really are and gives our lives a sense of integrity and coherence. By practicing mindful action, we learn to handle the challenges of our goals with poise and determination, seeing possible setbacks as chances to grow. By doing this, we not only break out of the cycle of mediocrity, but we also start on a path to success that is marked by honesty, meaning, and a deep sense of accomplishment. We should carry the torch of enlightenment with us as we learn from the timeless wisdom of Stoicism. It can help us see our way out of the darkness of mediocrity, disappointment, and overthinking. To be successful, you don't need to have no problems. What you need are the strength, resilience, and clarity to get through each one. By practicing the stoic virtues of mindful action, adaptability, self-reflection, and living in line with our true nature, we can redefine success on our own terms and turn our goals into real achievements. The ancient wisdom of Stoicism offers a very different way to live in a world where telling everyone everything about our lives has become normal. The Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius and the Stoic philosophers Epictetus and Seneca taught us lessons that have stood the test of time. They taught us how important it is to keep some parts of our lives private. Their lessons teach us to treat life's experiences with respect and tranquility, understanding that not everything should be made public. Let us examine seven aspects of life that, in accordance with Stoic wisdom, are best kept private in order to help us live a life of virtue, resilience, and inner peace. The first one is your inner citadel. Marcus Aurelius introduced us to the idea of the inner citadel, which is a stronghold inside us where we can find safety and strength no matter what is going on around us. Our most private reflections, struggles, and victories take place in this personal sanctuary. There is an unmatched level of privacy there, where the outside world can't see what makes us unique. We meet our true selves in the serenity of our inner citadel and have a conversation with them that shapes how we see the world, what we believe, and even who we are. Stoics think that this inner dialogue is essential for self-improvement and realizing our place in the cosmos. It's a process of constant improvement and reflection in which we look at our reasons for doing things, face our fears, and grow virtues like wisdom, justice, courage, and temperance. It's not meant for the public to see this journey of self-reflection. Talking about the details of our inner change can make it less meaningful and take us off the path of real self-discovery. The inner citadel is also a safe place to escape the chaos of the outside world. It's a place where we can go to get peace and clarity, away from other people's opinions or expectations. Focusing only on our actions and responses is a stoic practice that helps us figure out what we can control and what we can't. We learn this in the solitude of our inner fortress. Being able to tell the difference between these two things is important for staying calm 
when life is uncertain. By keeping our inner citadel holy and secret, we protect its power as a source of strength and resilience. This helps us stay strong in our stoic pursuit of virtue and inner peace. The second thing is your problems and challenges. The experience of difficulties is deeply personal and transformative, and it shapes us in ways that are distinctive to each person. The Stoics say that the details of our struggles should be kept secret, not out of a sense of secrecy, but as a reflection of how deeply personal our development is. We are called to use virtues like patience, discipline and resilience when we face problems. These times put our character to the test and shape it in the fire of trial. Forgetting to focus on the internal process of overcoming and learning can happen when we share every detail of these challenges. Instead, we may look for approval or sympathy from others. The Stoic way of thinking tells us to take our problems to heart, think deeply about them and use them to grow as people. Recognizing that the real value of adversity lies in the strength and wisdom we gain from it, it is a process that requires introspection and self-reliance. Additionally, keeping our adversity private protects our pride and gives us control over the story. We live in a culture that often makes suffering seem exciting, so facing our battles with calm determination, without needing public praise or recognition, gives us a quiet sense of dignity. This doesn't mean we shouldn't ever ask for help or support, it just means that the specifics of our struggles are ours to own and work through. By doing this, we follow the Stoic principle of focusing on what we can change, how we think, what we choose, and how we respond to adversity. Stoics believe that keeping our challenges and difficulties to ourselves is not a sign of loneliness, but rather a testament to the fortitude of the human soul. It reminds us that we often grow in the quiet parts of our lives when no one is around. When we accept our problems as they are, we can really learn from them and use what we've learned to deal with future problems. In this way of doing things, you can develop resilience, self-reliance, and a deep sense of inner peace, all of which are important for navigating the rough waters of life. Third, what you think and feel about politics. As Stoic philosophy stresses reason, self-control, and the search for inner peace, talking about political views and opinions takes on a more complicated role. Stoics like Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, and Epictetus wrote and did things that had to do with politics. Aurelius, in particular, was a Roman emperor. However, their teachings stress how important it is to focus on what one can control. Politics can cause a lot of disagreement, so talking about political views and opinions can sometimes cause needless trouble, stress, and disagreement, which can get in the way of living a good and peaceful life. So, it might be best to keep your political views to yourself so that you can focus on personal growth and philosophical principles. Stoic philosophy says to protect your inner peace and focus on personal virtue. Hiding your political views is similar to this. You can reduce the chance of outside conflicts upsetting your tranquility by choosing not to participate in public political debates or to reveal your political views. This way of thinking doesn't mean that you don't care about or are interested in politics. Instead, it means that you have chosen to put inner peace and rational conversation ahead of potentially divisive public exchanges. Keeping political views and opinions to yourself also makes it easier to interact with others in a more open-minded way, which can help build community spirit that goes beyond political differences. This action shows the stoic principle of cosmopolitanism, which says that all people are part of the same community based on mutual respect and understanding instead of conflict and division. We make room for dialogue that focuses on shared human values and collective progress when we don't wear our political beliefs on our sleeves. This way of thinking encourages us to actively listen and think about things from different points of view, which helps us understand and relate to others better. 
By doing this, we not only uphold the stoic virtues of wisdom and justice in our interactions with others, but we also help build a society where people's differences of opinion don't get in the way of our pursuit of the common good and our humanity. Stoics believe that ideas should be discussed rationally and ideas should be judged on their own merits. Keeping political views private respects this belief. Stoicism encourages people to understand and care about others and it tells them to listen and think instead of trying to convince or follow the crowd. Choosing to keep your political opinions private can be a way to uphold stoic ideals of wisdom and temperance in a time when political discussions can quickly become polarized and disconnected from constructive debate. The fourth thing is your plans and goals. Stoic philosophy, which Marcus Aurelius and his followers followed, stressed how important it was to live a good life based on reason and virtue, focusing on actions rather than words. Stoics say that our plans and goals should also be kept secret because of this principle. Stoics place a high value on resilience, patience and adaptability because the path to our goals is frequently riddled with uncertainty and challenges. By keeping our plans and goals to ourselves, we can stay focused and maintain our inner tranquility while pursuing them without being sidetracked by other people's expectations or early scrutiny. Stoics believe that the only thing we can really control is our own thoughts and actions, which is why they say to keep your ambitions private. When we make our goals public before we're ready, we open ourselves up to opinions and possibly negative feedback which can weaken our resolve or make us question our path. Also, the stoic practice of focusing on the present and what we can change is harmed when we worry too much about what we will do in the future or what other people will think of us. The act of working toward a goal is just as important as the goal itself. This is an example of the stoic virtues of wisdom, discipline and persistence. By not telling anyone about our goals, we make sure that our journey stays true to who we are and what we want, without being affected by societal expectations or passing trends. The Stoics also believed that modesty was a virtue and that quiet achievement was powerful. It's possible to be strong when you work hard toward your goals without drawing attention to yourself. This way of doing things lets you think more deeply about your journey so you can make changes and learn from your mistakes without worrying about what other people will think. The resolute path of private ambition challenges us to redefine success on our own terms, focusing on personal growth and the satisfaction that comes from acting in accordance with our values and capabilities. In a world where success is often measured by visibility and recognition, Stoic philosophy tells us that keeping our plans and goals to ourselves is more important than getting approval from other people. It reminds us that the journey itself, the challenges we face, the virtues we develop, and the wisdom we gain along the way are what make true achievement so special. This method not only protects our mental and emotional health, but it also makes us more determined to reach our goals. We give ourselves the space and freedom to pursue our goals with honesty, focus, and a strong sense of purpose when we follow the stoic practice of privacy in our plans. We get the clarity and strength we need to find true and lasting happiness in the quiet of our own work. 5. The times when you feel most vulnerable. It might not make sense for someone to be vulnerable at times in stoic philosophy which stresses building personal virtue and resilience. Marcus Aurelius, Seneca and Epictetus, among other Stoics, recognized the value of facing our own weaknesses and fears as a path to development and self-understanding. Those times when we feel vulnerable are deeply personal events that shape who we are and how we deal with life's challenges. Stoics would say that these kinds of times should be kept secret not because they show weakness, but because the self-reflection and growth they encourage are inherently personal. 
When we keep our vulnerable moments to ourselves, we can work through our feelings and experiences without other people judging or affecting us. Because of its solitude, this place is perfect for deep reflection and self-discovery. To face our fears, question our beliefs, and ultimately find strength in our ability to overcome adversity, we need to be alone with our thoughts and feelings. A big part of Stoic philosophy is this process, which stresses how important it is to master yourself and your thoughts. Following the Stoic principle of focusing on what we can control, our thoughts, feelings and actions, allows us to deal with our weaknesses in private. The Stoics also know how important it is to be able to rely on yourself and how powerful it is to face our weaknesses without looking for approval or sympathy from others. This doesn't mean that getting help isn't a good idea. It just means that the main journey of realizing and overcoming our weaknesses is a personal one. Going inside to deal with our deepest fears and doubts is a sign of the Stoic virtues of courage and wisdom. You can really practice the Stoic ideals of calmness and courage in these private moments. They help you get ready to face the world with more strength and clarity. Stoicism's practice of keeping times of weakness private is a deep recognition of how personal growth and self-improvement are. It tells us to see our flaws not as instances of failure, but as chances to learn more about ourselves and grow as people. We show the Stoic virtues of courage, wisdom and self-reliance by being honest about our weaknesses in front of our own reflection. This way of doing things not only builds a strong and good character, it also makes sure that our path to self-mastery stays real and true. We find the strength and wisdom to live a life based on stoic principles, one based on virtue and the pursuit of personal excellence when we are alone and feeling weak. Number six, how much money you have. Stoic philosophy offers a different perspective on the issue of financial status in a world where wealth and financial success are often displayed and openly discussed. Stoics like Marcus Aurelius, Seneca and Epictetus say that virtue, wisdom and contentment are more important than wealth and other things that people can see. Stoics believe that person's character and their pursuit of a good life are more important than the things they own when it comes to true wealth. Because of this, it is best to keep the details of one's finances private, whether they are rich, in debt, or somewhere in between. This method encourages modesty, stops pointless comparison, and keeps the attention on what really matters, growing as a person and living an ethical life. Stoic philosophy says we should focus on what we can control, like our character, actions, and how we deal with life's challenges. Keeping our financial situation a secret is in line with this. Stoic principles of living a simple life and being happy with what you have support the practice of keeping money matters private. We develop a sense of gratitude for what we have, regardless of how it compares to others by doing this. This way of thinking encourages a simple life where happiness isn't tied to money but to the quality of our relationships, the pursuit of wisdom and the practice of virtue. Stoic advice to keep financial information private also makes sure that interactions aren't tainted by assumptions or biases. This makes it possible for relationships to grow deeper and more meaningful based on mutual respect understanding and shared values. Today, people are very focused on getting things they want. This way of doing things reminds us of the stoic belief that a person's worth is not in their money, but in their character and virtues. By putting privacy about our money first, we embrace a way of life that measures success in personal growth, contributing to the well-being of others and the pursuit of wisdom. This supports the Stoic idea that real wealth is found in the quality of our lives and relationships, not the amount of things we own. Number seven, your complaints and anger. 
personal grievances and resentments are seen through the lens of introspection and control over one's reactions in Stoic philosophy, which places a strong emphasis on reason, emotional resilience, and the pursuit of virtue. Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, and Epictetus all stressed the importance of overcoming negative emotions through comprehension, forgiving, and realizing that only our reactions to external events can harm us. So, letting off steam and holding on to anger are not only useless, they go against the principles of Stoicism. These philosophers would say that these kinds of things should stay private, because talking about them in public often makes things worse and takes attention away from personal development and finding tranquility. Stoic advice says to focus on what we can control, which means keeping our complaints and anger to ourselves. By choosing not to talk about every wrong or unfair thing we think has happened to us, we take back control of our emotions and refuse to let outside events control us. By doing this, we are encouraged to think about what our problems are, work on solving them within ourselves, and learn to forgive others and ourselves. In order to maintain our composure and peace of mind in the face of life's unavoidable challenges, this process helps us develop emotional maturity and character. The Stoics also thought that actions spoke louder than words. The virtues we want to grow are shown by how we handle our complaints in private and how we show resilience and forgiveness through our actions. In addition to being good for our own health, this way of thinking might also make the people around us think about how they react and maybe take a more calm approach to their problems. Stoic advice to keep our complaints and anger to ourselves teaches us the value of resolving problems within ourselves and the power to control how we react to things that happen in the outside world. In order to live a good, peaceful life, it challenges us to rise above small arguments and emotional upheaval and instead focus on our own growth. We develop resilience, forgiveness, and emotional intelligence by adhering to this principle, all of which improve our overall health and allow us to live in harmony with the world around us. We find the strength to let go of negativity and move forward with grace and wisdom in the solitude of our own reflections. Let us use the wisdom we've learned from Stoic philosophy to make our daily lives better the decision to protect our inner sanctum, our hopes, our weak spots, our personal boundaries, and beyond, becomes a source of strength and serenity in a world full of noise and the demand for our attention. Remember that the power of privacy is not in hiding who we are, but in honoring the sacred places inside of us that promote development, wisdom, and resilience. Let these seven pillars help us grow a garden of tranquility in our souls, where virtue thrives and peace resides as we go through the busy crossroads of life. Just for a moment, imagine that the most important thing you can do to live a meaningful, happy life isn't something you can buy, earn, or get from other people. It's already inside you, just waiting to be found and used. This isn't just a thought experiment, it's based on the wisdom of Stoicism, a philosophy that has helped countless people find meaning, tranquility, and peace in their lives over the centuries. Stoicism teaches us that the key to a good life is not praise from others or material wealth, but learning how to value ourselves through the virtues of temperance, courage, wisdom, and justice. It serves as a strong reminder that, despite the chaos and challenges of the outside world, we have the solid foundation for our own happiness and well-being inside of us. We're getting rid of the layers of societal expectations and self-doubt to find the timeless stoic principles that can change how we see the world and ourselves. This journey isn't just about getting better at yourself. It's also about rediscovering our true worth and learning how to live in line with our deepest values. You have come to the right place if you want to find personal freedom, resilience, and fulfillment. Sign 1. Putting up with less than you deserve. 
We've all done it at some point or another, right? We settle and make concessions all the time, whether it's staying in a job that drains us, staying in relationships that don't make us feel better, or not going after our dreams because we're afraid. We believe this is the best thing that can happen. Why do we do that, though? Is it worry? Is it ease? It could be a mix of the two. Stoicism teaches us that these outside things don't change our true worth, our essence. If you're in a palace or a prison, Stoicism says that what makes us unique is not where we are, but how we react to it. It means realizing that we may not be able to control everything in our lives, but we do have complete control over how we think, feel, and act. When we settle for less than we deserve, aren't we saying that other people and things have more power over us than we do? Stoicism tells us to question that idea. Stoicism tells us to ask ourselves, is this situation in line with my values? Am I reacting to this in a way that shows what I'm really worth? If the answer is no, it doesn't just leave us feeling hopeless. No, it gives us power. It states, look, you have the power to change your perception, to choose your response, and in doing so, to transform your reality. Remember this stoic wisdom the next time yourself starts to accept less than you deserve. You are not your job title, your relationship status, or the size of your bank account. Remind yourself of this. Your worth depends on how well you can stick to your values and always act with courage, wisdom, and honesty, no matter what. We shouldn't blame ourselves for our problems. Instead, we should give ourselves the tools to see and take control of the things we can change. Let's not settle for less, not because we think we deserve it or are cocky, but because we know how valuable we are. The strength and resilience that come from knowing who we are and what we stand for will help us face life's challenges. This is how Stoics live. When we do it, we don't just live, we thrive. Sign 2. Playing down your accomplishments. Why? Because recognizing our successes isn't just a way to feel good about ourselves. It's also a way to honor the hard work, discipline and persistence that got us there. It has to do with keeping our promises to follow through on our goals and values. Let us break it down. In Stoicism, virtues like temperance, courage, wisdom and fairness are very important. Most of the time, these virtues are what help you reach your goals, no matter how big or small they are. It might have taken bravery to apply for that job, wisdom to deal with the challenges that came up, or discipline, which is a form of temperance, to put that closet back together. You're not only undervaluing the result when you say your success was due to luck or that anyone could have done it. You're also undervaluing the good habits you used to get there. How then do we alter this state of minds? How can we start to be proud of what we've done without becoming cocky? Being balanced and honest are important to the stoic way of thinking. You should tell yourself, yes, I worked hard for this. Yes, I faced challenges and overcame them. And yes, this achievement is a reflection of my hard work and my virtues. You should do this not to boost your ego, but because it's the right thing to do. Okay, now I want you to think of something new you can do. It does not matter how big or small it is. Think about the good things you did to get there. You might have been very disciplined. You might have been brave and left your comfort zone. To solve a problem, you might have used your wisdom. No matter what it is, take a moment to recognize it and the good things that led to it. You're not supposed to pat yourself on the back during this exercise. Instead, it's meant to help you see the truth about your character and work. Adopting this stoic practice can change how we see our own successes and how we see ourselves. It helps us stop being fake modest and start really appreciating our own strengths and skills. When we recognize our accomplishments, it's not about our egos, but about the good qualities we've shown and the hard work we've put in. Sign 3. Putting the needs of others ahead of your own. It happens all the time, right? 
Sometimes it feels noble, selfless, and even heroic to do things like stay late at work to help a co-worker, skip your morning run to make breakfast for your family, or put your own dreams on hold to help someone else's. Still, there's a catch. Putting other people's needs ahead of your own all the time can make you tired, angry, and lose your sense of self. If you try to fill cups from an empty pitcher, you'll get nowhere. You run out at some point. Being detached or self-centered is not what Stoicism is about. It actually puts a lot of weight on being good and making society better. But it also shows us how crucial self-care is. Why? Because taking care of yourself isn't selfish. It's what makes it possible to care for others well. Let us break this down a bit. Stoicism teaches us about the difference between what we can control and what we cannot. We are in charge of our own thoughts, beliefs, actions, and yes, even self-care. No matter how much we want it to be different, we can't directly affect the health and happiness of other people. What we can change, though, is how ready we are to help, support, and love the people around us. We need to start by taking care of ourselves. How much more patient, understanding, and present are you for the people in your life when you're well-rested, healthy, and at peace? How can you help their health and happiness even more effectively? Mental and emotional resilience are just as important as physical health in this situation. It means having the inner strength to care about others, give them good advice, and be a source of stability and strength for them. How then do we find this middle ground? How can we make sure that helping others doesn't mean we forget about our own needs? First, you have to realize that self-care isn't a nice-to-have or an afterthought. It's important. It means setting aside time for things that make us feel better, like working out, meditating, reading, or just being alone for a few minutes. It means being able to set limits and say no when we need to. These things should not be done for selfish reasons, but because we want to be our best selves for the people we care about. You are being asked to think of one way you can put your own health first this week. What could it be? Committing to a daily walk, making time for a hobby you love, or setting limits on your work hours. When you do something to take care of yourself, remember that it's not just for you. It's also a way to make sure that when you do help other people, you're being your best self. Sign 4. It's hard for you to accept compliments. Stoicism teaches us how important it is to look at ourselves with an open mind. This means being honest about our weaknesses as well as our strengths. We should not think about our worth in an egotistical way, but in a fair and balanced way. Why is it so hard for us to take compliments? Most of the time, it's because we have a skewed view of ourselves. It's possible that we're focusing too much on our flaws, or we may have been taught that recognizing our strengths makes us cocky. But here's a stoic view to think about. Being humble doesn't mean denying our strengths. It means recognizing them in a grounded and realistic way. It's about seeing ourselves as they really are, without the ego or insecurity getting in the way. Stoicism teaches us that recognizing our strengths and accomplishments does not make us less valuable. Accepting compliments with grace is a good way to become more self-aware and objective. It helps us see the good qualities we have and the work we've put in, which helps us understand who we really are. When someone says nice things about us, they're usually noticing something real and admirable about us. We miss out on the chance to see ourselves through someone else's eyes and understand how we affect the world around us when we ignore these moments. How can we get better at taking compliments? Changing our minds is the first step. It's helpful to think of praise as a mirror that shows off your good qualities and hard work. Instead of avoiding the truth, take a moment to think about what they said. You can practice by simply saying, thank you. Don't downplay or avoid the compliment. Instead, express gratitude for the acknowledgement of your work and qualities. Additionally, 
Stoicism advises us to take advantage of these moments for reflection. Ask yourself, what did I do to deserve this praise? How does it show my virtues and hard work? This isn't about stroking your ego, it's about recognizing the part of you that can do great things and make a difference. Sign 5. Not wanting to make a choice. When you were faced with a choice that seemed easy, did you find yourself frozen, unable to make a choice? It's more than just indecision. This fear of making the wrong choice is a reflection of a deeper problem, a lack of self-trust. We feel like we're standing on the edge of a diving board, looking down into the pool below. We know we need to jump, but we can't. In this fog of uncertainty, Stoicism offers a lantern. For us, it teaches us that making choices based on wisdom and reason is more important than being sure of what will happen. Stoicism reminds us that we have full control over the process of making decisions, but not over how those decisions turn out. It means making decisions that are in line with our values, being honest and accepting that the results, no matter what they are, are just the way life is. What is it that makes us afraid to choose? Most of the time, it's because we don't want to make the wrong decision, which could lead to results we see as failures or mistakes. But Stoicism asks us to change how we think about mistakes and failures. According to the Stoics, every outcome is a chance to learn and grow. Failures don't exist. Lessons do. This point of view tells us to believe in ourselves and make choices with courage and confidence, because we know that the outcome will help us grow and understand. How, though, do we learn to trust ourselves? How can we, so to speak, get better at making decisions? The first step is to accept wisdom and reason. Take some time to think about your choice before making one. When you make a choice, ask yourself, does this choice fit with my values? Am I acting with integrity? By basing your choices on your core values and reason, you can be sure that you made the choice with the best intentions and knowledge you had at the time. Stoicism teaches us that we should accept the results of our choices and learn from them. We can learn something from every result, even if it's not what we wanted. This is a call to think about what went well and poorly, and how we can use these lessons in the future. Self-confidence is developed through this process of reflection and learning. It gives us confidence that we can handle the rough waters of life, make choices that are in line with our values, and learn from each experience. Sign 6. Critiquing yourself too much. Stoicism teaches us how to make smart choices, especially about how to use our minds. It says that beating ourselves up for every mistake we think we've made is like trying to sail a ship without paying attention to the wind and tides. We have our attention on the wrong things. According to Stoic wisdom, we should understand that perfection is a lie that we can't reach. Instead, we should aim for progress, steady, deliberate steps that help us become better people. Why do we get stuck in the habit of being overly critical of ourselves? Most of the time, it's because we hold ourselves to impossible standards, ones we would never hold anyone else to. We forget that part of being human is having flaws, making mistakes, and most importantly, being able to learn and grow from them. Stoicism provides a potent remedy for this self-imposed tyranny, self-compassion and the pursuit of progress rather than perfection. From a Stoic perspective, self-compassion means treating ourselves with the same kindness, understanding and forgiveness that we would extend to a good friend. It means realizing that setbacks are a normal part of life and not a reflection of who we are as people. The Stoic way to deal with failure is not to blame yourself, but to ask, what can I learn from this? How can I grow? A change in how we view our journey is necessary to adopt this mindset. We are making progress with every effort, even if the results are not what we had hoped for. Our mantra will be progress, not perfection. 
This doesn't mean we stop trying to get better or stop caring about it. Rather, it means we work harder to get better while having the wisdom to understand that growth isn't always linear, is full of challenges, and is beautifully imperfect. Why does it seem so simple to compare things? Some of it comes from the fact that people naturally compare their own worth and achievements to those of those around them. However, this tendency is amplified to a level that has never been seen before in the age of social media. We see snapshots of other people's lives all the time that only show the good times and never the bad. This makes us wonder if our own experiences are worth living and what they mean. The cultivation of self-awareness and gratitude for our own journey is a powerful antidote to this gloom that Stoicism offers. As it says, it tells us to look inward and think about our own growth, virtues and the progress we've made. Stoicism encourages the idea of inspiration over comparison rather than isolation or indifference to other people. It shows us how to admire the good qualities and accomplishments of others without making our own less important or less progress. To avoid falling into the comparison trap, how can Stoic principles be applied? First, by being mindful and noticing when we start to compare our behind-the-scenes to someone else's highlight reel. It's about reminding ourselves that social media is just a collection of carefully chosen photos, not a true reflection of life. Second, Stoicism teaches us how important it is to focus on the things we can change, like our actions, our thoughts, and our good qualities. These are the seeds that our unique journey will grow from. Focusing on taking care of these seeds helps us grow a garden that is full of personal meaning, without the need for outside approval or comparison. Finally, gratitude is very important. Practicing gratitude for our own experiences, challenges and successes helps us stay in the present and enjoy how full our lives are. This doesn't make us lazy. Instead, it gives us the strength to seek growth and improvement from a place of contentment, not inadequacy. Sometimes you forget to do the things you want to do, like take that class, start that hobby, or even take care of yourself. A lot of us do it. This isn't just because we don't have enough time or money. It's often because we don't see our own worth. It's like telling ourselves, I'm not worth the trouble. That being said, Stoicism, which has deep insights into how people are and what is right and wrong, challenges us to see self-improvement as more than just a task. It's a way to respect yourself. Stoicism tells us that our ability to reason and be good makes us unique, and that the only way to find true happiness is to work on these things. So, how can we begin to put that money into ourselves? This starts with changing our minds, which is in line with Stoic philosophy. We must begin to view self-improvement as a crucial, non-negotiable part of our lives. This doesn't mean making big changes to our lives all at once. It means investing in ourselves in small ways over time. A simple way to do this could be to read a book about something that interests us, meditate for a few minutes every day, or start a hobby that makes us happy. The importance of reflection and self-examination is another lesson that Stoicism teaches. This helps us figure out our strengths and weaknesses, which guides our personal investment efforts. It gives us a sense of purpose and direction to regularly look at our lives, set goals, and think about how we're doing. It's important to align our actions with our values, develop our virtues, and live a life with purpose and meaning as part of the self-reflection and goal-setting process, not just to achieve external success markers. Accepting the idea of lifelong learning is another important part. According to the Stoics, wisdom was not a place you get to, but a path you take. A mindset of being interested and willing to try new things can change how we think about personal investment. It's not a chore, it's an adventure, a chance to see how much life has to offer in terms of knowledge and experience. Living in line with our values and principles 
is the only way to truly feel validated. The Stoics thought that our actions, intentions and responses were the only things we could really change. Marcus Aurelius reminded us in a beautiful way that what bothers us is not other people's opinions, but how we think about those opinions. Why do we look for approval from other people? A lot of the time, it comes from feeling insecure and afraid of not being good enough in a world that is always telling us what we should be, do, or have. It's simple to lose track of our way. Stoicism, on the other hand, tells us to turn our attention inward and work on improving our character and living a good life. It teaches us that real happiness and peace don't come from other people's approval, but from knowing we've been true to ourselves. How then can we break free from the chains of outside approval? Being aware of yourself is the first step. By becoming aware of our propensity to seek approval, we can begin to question why we do the things we do. Are we working toward a goal because it fits with our values or because we want praise? Stoicism teaches us to regularly reflect on our intentions to make sure they are in line with our values and self. Developing self-sufficiency is another Stoic practice that can help us fight the need for approval from other people. This doesn't mean shutting ourselves off or not caring about other people. It means being happy and content with ourselves and realizing that we are whole just the way we are. Another Stoic philosopher, Epicus, said that we should focus on what we can control and let go of what we can't. When we work on being happy inside, we depend less on outside sources of approval. Stoicism also tells us to change how we think about success. Stoicism teaches us that we shouldn't judge our success by awards or praise from other people. Instead, we should judge it by how well we can live our lives according to our values. The pursuit of virtue, the application of reason, and the development of resilience in the face of life's challenges are all important components of success from a Stoic perspective. Being able to handle bad situations. Why do we often put up with bad situations? Most of the time, it's because we don't believe we can change. We may be afraid of the unknown, hold on to what we know, or question our worth. Stoicism challenges these fears and doubts by helping us see how valuable we are and how much control we have over our actions and thoughts. It tells us to question the idea that we are stuck and to understand that most of the time we have the power to change our situations or how we think about them. Stoicism gives us tools to get around and change the places we're in. The development of internal resilience and autonomy is a crucial Stoic practice. For this reason, we shouldn't be indifferent or detached. Instead, Marcus Aurelius suggests that we strengthen our inner citadel so that we can stay strong and true to our values, even when things are bad and chaotic. Building a strong inner core makes us less vulnerable to the bad things going on around us and more able to make decisions that are good for our health. The idea of living in harmony with nature is another stoic principle that can help us. This means trying to find harmony in our own lives and in the world around us. This means that we actively look for or make environments that help us grow, be healthy and be happy. It means realizing that we deserve respect, kindness and good interactions with others and choosing not to settle for less. In real life, finding environments that help us grow could mean setting limits in our personal relationships, looking for new job opportunities, or even changing our social circles to include more positive and helpful people. It also means putting time and effort into creating a personal space by doing things like journaling, meditating, or hobbies that are good for our mental and emotional health. What is it about fear that makes it so strong? Often, it's because we know very well what we have to lose. We have vivid images in our minds of failing, of wasting time and effort, and of how other people might judge us. Stoicism recognizes our fears, but it also asks us to consider what we have to gain. 
we are told to compare our fears to the chances of growing, being happy, and making our dreams come true. Stoicism teaches us that the pursuit of virtue, or doing the best that fits our nature, is a worthwhile goal in and of itself, no matter what happens. Fear of following your dreams To get over the fear of following your dreams, one Stoic practice is to imagine bad things that might happen. This is also known as negative visualization today. This means thinking about the worst-case scenarios, but not to dwell on them. The goal is to make them less powerful over us. We often find that our fears are not as scary as we thought they were when we think about the hard things that might happen and accept that we can get through them. It doesn't mean we stop caring about risks or become careless. Instead, it means we approach our dreams with a balanced view, knowing that failure is possible, but not the end. It's a step on our way to growth. Amor Fati, which means love of fate, is another Stoic idea that can inspire us to follow our dreams. This is the idea that we should welcome whatever life brings us with joy, not just resignation. When we follow our dreams with Amor Fati, we open ourselves up to all kinds of experiences, including successes, failures, joys, and disappointments. These are all normal parts of being human. This acceptance frees us from the fear that holds us back and lets us move forward with courage and determination. Stoicism stresses how important it is to act in line with our own strengths and abilities. It reminds us that our real worth doesn't come from what we've done, but from how committed we are to living a good life and working hard to reach our goals with honesty, courage and integrity. In this light, being afraid to follow our dreams is not only something that stops us from succeeding, it also stops us from living a life that is truly ours. Failure to see your own value. Why do we forget this basic lesson from Stoicism so often? Part of the reason is that we naturally want to connect with others and feel important. If we don't watch out, this can make us look for our worth in the reflection of other people's opinions or in the milestones of success we reach. Stoicism, on the other hand, teaches us that real worth comes from living in line with our nature and virtues. Epicurus said very well that the best way to be free is not to get what we want, but to get rid of what we want. This principle has a big impact on how we think about our worth. Real freedom and happiness don't come from approval from other people, but from understanding and accepting our own worth. Stoicism tells us to stop focusing on what we can do for other people and start working on improving our character. It teaches us that our worth is not based on the titles we have, the money we have, or the approval we get, but on our promise to live a good life and always act with honesty, kindness, and courage, no matter what. Not that accomplishments and praise don't matter. They do. What I mean is that they are not what make us valuable. Our worth is built into us and can't be changed, just like the stars in the sky at night. Realizing this frees us from always looking for approval from other people. What can we do to develop this calm sense of our own worth? Self-reflection, which involves looking inward to recognize and value our strengths, efforts and resilience, is where it all starts. Recognizing that our skills, character and potential are the real measures of our worth, practicing gratitude for them is a big part of it. It also means learning to separate our sense of worth from other people's opinions, which change, and from the short-term nature of accomplishments. This distance isn't a sign of indifference. It's a way of seeing things and figuring out what's important in the big picture of our lives. This feeling can come from a lot of different places, like past traumas, societal norms, or personal failures. We compare our journey to others, only seeing the best parts of their lives while being very aware of what goes on behind the scenes in our own. We doubt our worthiness because of this comparison, which is fueled by the false belief that happiness is a limited resource 
that is only given to those who deserve it. Stoicism tells us to get rid of these false ideas and see that happiness is not a reward, but a way of life. It asks us to think about our values, make sure that our actions are in line with these values, and find joy in the pursuit of virtue and the practice of reason. Stoicism teaches us to focus on what we can control, our thoughts, actions and reactions, and let go of what we can't. This helps us deal with not deserving of happiness and the practice of reason. This way of looking at things gives us the power to create our own happiness through the choices and attitudes we have every day. How can we adopt this serious way of looking at happiness? It starts with changing the story we tell ourselves about being worthy. We need to fight the idea that being happy depends on accomplishments, approval from others, or being perfect. Believing that happiness comes from being good, making the best decisions we can, and enjoying the present moment is a better way to think about it. Stoicism also emphasizes the value of gratitude. When we practice gratitude, we change our attention from what we don't have to what we do have, from what we think we don't have enough of to the abundance in our lives. This change in perspective is very important for feeling like you deserve happiness because it lets you see the good things, chances and potential in your daily life. Stoicism reminds us how important it is to have friends and family. Finding happiness is not a journey you take by yourself. By building meaningful relationships and supporting each other, we know that our worthiness for happiness is supported not only by ourselves, but also by the love and wisdom of those around us. Now it's time to go on a deep dive into the human mind and find the knots that hold us back from being mentally strong. We will face these shadows by drawing on the ancient art of Stoicism and come out on the other side as architects of our own strength. 1. We often get caught up in the illusion that we are in charge of outside events because we are holding on to the illusion of control in the maze of our thoughts, where shadows dance. It's a tempting lie, a mirage that draws us into the world of fake omnipotence. The profound truth that has been hidden in the recesses of our minds is revealed by Stoicism, with Epicurus as our guide. Epicurus, who seems to speak through the ages, reminds us with a voice as old as the universe itself. We can't change the things that happen to us, but we can always change how we react to them. This statement, a light of calm enlightenment, shines through the darkness of our skewed perceptions. The most important part of Stoic wisdom is not trying to control the outside world, which is a constantly changing mosaic that we can't grasp. Instead, real resilience comes from being able to control how we react to life's unpredictable threads. This revelation is where our power is kept safe. We can shape our futures not by fighting the things we can't control, but by taking control of our inner world. When we face the storms going on around us, the Stoic path helps us get through them. It teaches us that we don't have control over the chaos going on around us, but over how we react to it. We use the chisel of our reactions to carve meaning from the raw materials of circumstance, like a skilled artist shaping a work of art. We should stop trying to change the outside world to fit our needs, says Epicurus, and put our energy into controlling our own reactions instead. By doing this, we reveal a source of strength, resilience, and untapped potential. Instead of a pointless fight against things that can't be controlled, the Stoic journey is an inner journey to mastery of self. When life is full of unknowns, Stoicism shines like a lantern, showing the way to self-mastery. Even though the shadows may still be there, accepting the Stoic revelation frees us from the false allure of outside control. We are in charge of our own lives, not by taking power from the world, but by shaping our responses with the timeless wisdom found in Epicurus's words. When people in the holy halls of Stoic wisdom fear the inevitable, Seneca said something profound. 
He who fears death will never do anything worthy of a man who is alive. These words, like an ancient spell, reverberate through the halls of time, revealing a holy truth that goes beyond this world. Seneca, the Stoic philosopher, tells us to face the constant threat of death with a bravery that goes beyond mere existence. His wisdom is a strong call to action that urges us to free our spirits from the chains of fear. What it means is that we are invited to dance with the fact that we will die, turning our fear of death into a spark for a life that is richer than ever. To be afraid of death is to live in the shadows, a prisoner of fear that stops you from living. The ancient philosopher Seneca takes on the role of a torchbearer, leading us out of this dark realm. He urges us to accept death not as a sign of bad things to come, but as a friend, a constant companion that makes our lives more interesting. When we accept that life is short, we free ourselves from the weight of an impending end. The ghost of death, which used to be a scary presence, changes into a quiet muse that encourages us to enjoy every moment with a never-ending zest for life. The paradoxical truth that accepting that death is inevitable frees us to truly live is demonstrated by Seneca's wisdom. The stoic call to free ourselves from the fear of what will happen is an opening into a world of endless possibilities. It's a recognition that the human spirit can reach impossible heights when faced with death. When we let go of the fear that comes with death, we can build a life that isn't limited by the dark things that lie ahead. Seneca's words don't just have philosophical meaning, they also have a transformative power. They call us to build resilience so that we can navigate the complicated tapestry of life. When we accept that we will die, we not only face our mortal limitations, but we also awaken the dormant powers within us that allow us to leave a legacy that lasts beyond time. When we listen to the call to get over our fear of death, we open the door to a life that is lit up by the beauty of our own passing. Seneca's wisdom becomes a lighthouse that guides us through the dark and gives us the strength to make a way that connects with the deep vitality of the human spirit. When we accept that life is temporary, we find the true power to live fully without worrying about what lies ahead. In the vast theatre of human existence, the search for external validation casts shadows that reach far and wide, enveloping the soul in the murkiness of insecurity. Marcus Aurelius's deep wisdom shines through this darkness with a warning that echoes through the halls of time. It is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste much of it. These words contain a revelation that goes beyond the limits of time and space in ancient Rome, offering a timeless light of enlightenment to those who are willing to follow its call. The constant need for approval from others makes it easy for the shadows of weakness to grow and wrap themselves around the roots of our sense of self-worth. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic king and philosopher, tells us to look inside, away from the world's fleeting praise. He says that the real source of strength is not the fleeting words of others, but the fires of self-approval that burn in the crucible of our own convictions. Going outside of yourself to find approval is like giving up control of your identity to the random judgments of others. As we try to fit in with other people's expectations and lose sight of our true selves in the process, the shadows grow longer. Marcus Aurelius, a famously stoic figure, begs us to break free from this self-imposed prison and look deeply within. True strength is built in the holy place of self-approval. It's not the praise of many people that makes someone strong. It's staying true to their own principles and values. When we know how valuable we are, the fires inside us get fed. This is where the authentic self is shaped and improved. The whispers of approval from other people are short-lived, like echoes that disappear into the distance of time. By turning our attention inward, we can walk along a path lit by the steady flame of self-validation, which can stand up to the winds of other people's opinions. 
Having this inner strength protects us from the shadows of weakness, so we can stand firm in the face of the world's temporary judgments. Marcus Aurelius's stoic wisdom tells us to take back our time from people who are looking for approval. When we understand how valuable each moment is, we stop wasting our life's currency on seeking unattainable external affirmations. We invest in the wealth of self-approval instead, building a resilience that goes beyond the fleeting nature of praise from others. When we embrace Marcus Aurelius's wisdom, the shadows of our weakness fade and the light of self-approval shines on our path. In this inner sanctuary, we find a strength that lasts, unaffected by what other people think. So, let's listen to the call to turn our attention inward, because self-approval is where the unquenchable strength of the human spirit finds its last flame. 4. When we give in to the whispers of desire in the complex maze of our desires, we embark on a dangerous journey where the siren calls of unbridled want threaten to drown out the sounds of reason. Fear not, for the stoic path, a light of wisdom in this maze-like space, begs us to shut up the tempting whispers that lead us astray. A stoic philosopher from ancient times named Epictetus said, we suffer not from the events in our lives, but from our judgments about them. Desire, with its alluring allure, can become the maze that traps the unwary traveler. The Stoics, who were influenced by Epictetus, show us that what holds us back is not the events themselves, but the judgments we make about them. To navigate this maze with wisdom and resilience, the call to master our desires becomes a rallying cry. To master desire is not to put out the fires inside, but to direct them with purpose. It's a call to tell the difference between short-lived desires that lead to temporary pleasures and long-lasting goals that are in line with who we really are. We learn to tell the difference between the transient shadows of want and the enduring light of fulfillment in the furnace of self-mastery, the chains of never-ending desire made in the fires of unchecked desire, are heavy on the spirit. With Epictetus as our guide, the Stoic sage tells us to break free from these chains by making our wants less intense. In this freedom, we don't find a lonely void, but a place where the true self can come out, free from the chains of unquenchable desire. The path of Stoicism turns into a pilgrimage, an inner alchemy journey, where desires are changed from cruel masters to obedient servants. While going through this change, the traveler is freed from the ego's constant demands and is able to navigate life's maze with grace and purpose. When we listen to the stoic call to control our wants, we find a deep truth. We have the power to write our own stories. Events that happen around us become opportunities for growth and self-discovery rather than chains that bind. Epictetus, in his sage wisdom, tells us that suffering is not caused by events themselves, but by how we interpret them. The stoic soul finds comfort in the silence that comes after the noise of unrestrained wants. Once a confusing maze, the labyrinth of desire changes into a holy place where clarity rules. Taking control of our desires is where the stoic path shows its transformative power. This is the power that frees us from the labyrinth's traps and lets us walk forward with purpose, resilience, and a strong commitment to our soul's deepest desires. 5. In the huge cosmic tapestry, there are things that try to stop the flow of change. But change is always there, shaping the very fabric of the universe. Somber souls that are in tune with the beat of the cosmic dance find comfort in Heraclitus's deep teachings, which include the phrase, change is the only constant. These words hold a timeless truth, showing how everything is always changing. We have to pay attention to change, because it's like an ethereal maestro conducting the symphony of life. Stoics, who got their ideas from Heraclitus, say that we should accept that things are always changing with an open mind. To fight against the ebb and flow of change is to face the unending void, 
a chasm that people who stand against the cosmic current risk falling into. Through the light of Heraclitus's wisdom, the Stoic path invites us to give up, but not to the void, but to the beautiful river of existence. We find a deep serenity in this surrender, an oasis in the midst of life's storms, to move through this river of change with grace, letting its currents carry us to new shores of experience and understanding, we must accept that it is inevitable. To fight against change is to fight against the very nature of things. The stoic soul, on the other hand, picks a different path, one of acceptance and living in balance with the cosmic dance. When we give up, we become skilled dancers who move in sync with the complicated choreography of change and find beauty in the way it flows. With its twists and turns, life is like a river that takes us through landscapes of happiness and sadness, growth and decay. The Stoic finds resilience in accepting this journey that goes beyond the transient nature of the material world. The void that the stubborn soul feared would consume them turns into a huge canvas where the Stoic paints the masterpiece of a life well lived. It's not passivity to accept change, it's empowerment. Realizing that the never-ending change is where growth, wisdom and self-discovery can be found. Stoic souls float on the currents of acceptance, allowing them to navigate the river of life with a tranquility that those who desperately cling to the shores of sameness cannot achieve. The ancient philosopher Heraclitus taught us a truth that will never go out of style. Change is what makes the universe go round and round. The Stoic finds deep serenity in accepting that everything in life is transient when they align themselves with this heartbeat. To dance with the cosmic rhythms of change is to embrace the sublime beauty of life. We find comfort not in the still waters of resistance, but in the river that flows continuously towards the endless horizons of our own becoming. Sixth, if you don't pay attention to the power of now in life's grand symphony, the present moment becomes the most beautiful and valuable note, full of the possibility of joy, fulfillment and deep meaning. We often get stuck in the echoes of the past or anxiously look ahead to the uncertain beats of the future, though because life is so well planned. Seneca, a Stoic philosopher, invites us to seize the day, enjoy the harmony of the present, and realize that the only way to be truly happy is to enjoy the present without worrying about what will happen in the future. The present moment, like a fleeting melody, holds the essence of what it means to live. Life happens in the present moment, where the symphony of sensations, emotions and opportunities blends to make a one-of-a-kind piece that can't be replaced. But because minds tend to wander, people often get stuck in the hallways of the past or project their worries onto the canvas of an uncertain future. Without losing his stoic clarity, Seneca tells us to let go of our worries about the future and enjoy the present moment. The pursuit of true happiness, he says, lies not in the hazy promises of the future or the somber reflections of the past, but rather in the conscious and mindful engagement with the notes that dance in front of us right now. It's not just a call to action to seize the day. It's a way of life that goes beyond the fleeting nature of time. Engaging with the richness of the present and drawing out the nectar of joy from every moment is a choice. We free ourselves from the weight of regrets and the worries of what lies ahead by doing this, and we experience a deep serenity that can only be found in the present moment. Philosopher Seneca wrote a counsel that contains stoic wisdom that tells us to develop a presence of mind that makes each moment more aware. He says that we can only be truly happy when we stop being held captive by time and stop looking forward to future rewards or dwelling on mistakes made in the past. To enjoy the present without worrying about what might happen in the future is to reach a state of mindful equilibrium. This is when you know that everything changes and enjoy the beauty of the present moment. 
Seneca's advice to seize the day is like an invitation to enjoy life's symphony, to enjoy the melody of each moment with a deep appreciation for how it fits into the orchestral masterpiece that is our lives. Seneca's words become a guiding refrain that reminds us to pay attention to the present, enjoy the harmonies of now, and understand that true happiness is a melody written in the key of mindful living. A melody that grows with each note we choose to hold on to and enjoy in the constantly changing score of our lives. When life gets rough, the stoic warrior stays calm inside, letting the storms outside determine their own peace. They are a model of resilience, unaffected by the chaos around them. The stoic ethos, a call to action that goes beyond the illusions of external tranquility, is encapsulated in the words of Epictetus, a revered Stoic philosopher. We cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond. We can't control how life unfolds. It's an unpredictable tapestry of happiness and sadness. The Stoic warrior, on the other hand, gets through this complicated dance not by changing the outside threads, but by learning how to respond. Epictetus tells us to realize that we have control over our reactions, which is a very empowering idea that is at the heart of stoic resilience. Building castles on shifting sands is like clinging to the illusion of external tranquility because the world is always changing. Stoics, on the other hand, look inward because they know that true and lasting peace doesn't depend on the random events of life. Instead, it is a fortress built in the depths of the soul, a safe place where the storms that happen outside can't get in. The stoic warrior doesn't hide in a false utopia of unbroken serenity or deny the existence of external challenges. Instead, they face the chaos head on, knowing that their inner strength is the key to their overall health and happiness. The stoic soul develops its fortitude in the face of adversity. Even if we can't change the things that happen around us, how we react to them determines our fate. The stoic warrior learns to deal with chaos in a way that goes beyond it through disciplined self-reflection. They become not a victim of their circumstances, but a creator of their own fate. A deliberate practice, an art form that demands commitment and resilience, is cultivating an unshakable inner peace. It means training the mind to tell the difference between the temporary chaos of the outside world and the deep, lasting calm that lives inside each of us. Through this inner alchemy, the stoic warrior learns that real mastery is not in controlling the storms, but in riding them out with a calm and peaceful mind. Epictetus tells us that the stoic warrior's journey is a call to accept the contradictions of life to know that we can't control what happens in the outside world, but strongly control how we react to it. In this dance between chaos and calm, the stoic warrior stands out as a symbol of the strong human spirit, one that can choose the steady path of inner peace and resilience even when life is rough. If we ignore the inner citadel within, in the crucible of the soul, where the fires of experience shape the core of who we are, there stands an inner fortress, an impregnable bastion that can stand up to the chaos that flows through the corridors of existence. A lot of people have said this over the years, but Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher-emperor of Stoicism, said, Very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. This deep command is an invitation to strengthen the citadel within, because that's where our real strength lies. The birthplace of the inner fortress is the crucible of the soul, which is a figure of speech for the place where life's problems shape who we are. Marcus Aurelius, a stoic luminary, lights the way to the sanctuary, an inner stronghold that can't be damaged by the storms that may come from the outside. This safe place is not made of bricks and mortar, but from the things we think, believe, and point of view. Marcus Aurelius said that to strengthen this citadel means to understand the power that lies within us, the power that comes from the way we think. 
being able to say that true happiness is not dependent on outside circumstances, but on how we feel. Inside is a great example of the Stoic philosophy. So, the inner fortress turns into a safe place where happiness isn't tied to what happens in the outside world, but is a flame that ignites itself when we choose how to understand and react to life's many aspects. It becomes necessary to watch over this sanctuary, because inside its walls lies the source of our true strength. Marcus Aurelius thinks of the Stoic warrior as someone who stands not against the outside world, but in unwavering defense of this inner stronghold. It's a call to fiercely guard the sanctity of our thoughts by developing a vigilant mindfulness that keeps the fortress safe from the forces that might try to break through its walls. Marcus Aurelius says that the richest part of a happy life is not having a lot of things or enjoying short-lived pleasures, but being in charge of your inner world. In this wisdom, the Stoic path encourages careful and deliberate management of the mind, an art of thinking that turns the fiery furnace of the soul into a stronghold that can't be broken by life's ups and downs. When we realize how powerful our thoughts are, we gain a deep sense of independence and the power to shape our own lives. The Stoic way of thinking strengthens our inner fortress, which acts as an anchor in the rough waters of life, giving us the strength to calmly handle storms, find joy in the simple things in life, and find our way through the maze of life with unwavering purpose. We set out on a journey of self-fortification as we heed Marcus Aurelius's plea, an odyssey into the core of our thoughts and beliefs. As soon as the inner citadel is strengthened, it turns into an unbreakable source of strength and a lighthouse of resilience that guides us through life's challenges. Protect it with all your might, because inside its walls lies the key to a happy and fulfilling life, a treasure trove of happiness that can't be touched by the changes in the outside world. As we walk the boards of life, we realize that the script we follow is not just our own creation. We are living in the vast cosmic theater where the people who inhabit existence play their parts on a stage that goes beyond the limits of time and space. The Stoic sage Epictetus says something profound. We have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. In this wisdom, we are invited to let go of what we can't control, to tune our senses to the cosmic symphony and to submit to the ebb and flow of the cosmos. When you think of ourselves as actors on a cosmic stage, you can see how grand our lives are. They are like a story, and fate and cosmic forces shape our journey. Realizing that our script isn't completely our own is a freeing realization that urges us to give up the illusion of full control and embrace the mysteries of our existence in the universe. Epictetus, known for his stoic ideas, draws our attention to the balance that is built into our bodies. For example, the way that two ears are placed next to one mouth is a powerful reminder that we should listen with more than just our physical senses. It is a reminder to tune in to the wisdom that flows through the vastness of the universe and to find the hidden messages in the music of life. Being humble means listening twice as much as we speak. It means realizing that the universe speaks in whispers and that deep insights may come to light in the silence between our words. It means admitting that giving up the need to control every story lets us be open to the lessons woven into the cosmic fabric, which is full of lessons and universal truths. The stoic advice to let go of what you can't control turns into a holy mantra that will be heard for all time. It tells us to let go of the weight of pointless resistance, loosen our grip on the false promises of power, and let the dance of fate unfold in our hearts. By giving up, we align ourselves with the universe's natural rhythms and stop fighting the current against it. Instead, we become part of a beautiful ballet. Giving in to the ebb and flow is the only way to gracefully ride the waves of life. It's not a sign of giving up. It's a sign of a deep understanding that our 
greatest power lies in accepting what we can't change. Giving in to the cosmic forces helps us find balance, which lets us move with purpose and poise, riding the waves of fate instead of fighting their pull. We start on a journey of receptivity and surrender as we heed Epictetus's wisdom and accept that our story is just one thread in the cosmic tapestry. We can get advice, comfort, and a stronger connection to the vastness of existence by listening to the whispers of the universe. Let go of what we can't control, tune our ears to the cosmic symphony, and dance with humility and grace in sync with the flow and ebb of the cosmic current. Giving up the stoic path in order to walk it is like starting a sacred odyssey, a personal journey of self-discovery and building up unwavering resilience. As the famous Stoic philosopher Seneca said, he suffers more than necessary who suffers before it is necessary. This saying is heard often in the hallowed halls of Stoic wisdom, calling those who are ready to find their inner strength. You are being clearly asked to act quickly, learn from the teachings of the Stoics, and make a way to the holy place of resilience. It is important to carry the flame of Stoicism with us as we walk through the maze of shadows inside us, a flame that knows no end and burns forever. Seneca's words have been true for a long time and remind us that suffering doesn't have to be an unnecessary burden. Instead, it can be a place where we test our strength. On this holy journey, we learn that the path to mind control is lit by the stoic flame, which is bright and won't bend. On the stoic path, you don't go on a solo journey, you go with other people. Echoes of Seneca's wisdom bring us together and help us see that we are not the only ones trying to find inner strength. When we all agree on stoic principles, we become a community of seekers, each navigating the complicated terrain of the soul for the same reason. We are all on this journey together, and it holds us together in a silent agreement that goes beyond the shadows we each face. We can follow the bright path that Stoic wisdom left us as we go through the deepest part of self-exploration. It cuts through the darkness and gets rid of the false ideas that are getting in the way of our progress. When we follow the teachings of Stoicism, they help us find the shores of inner strength and resilience. We can find comfort, inspiration, and the strength to face our shadows in the stoic flame. Finding inner strength isn't something you do by yourself. It's a goal we all share that ties our individual journeys together. May the echoes of stoic wisdom reverberate through all of our efforts and bring us together in a common goal. May we emerge from the labyrinth not as lost souls, but as shining lights of resilience, illuminating a shadowy world. We learn from the crucible of the stoic path that suffering can be transformed into a force for good when faced with the resilience that comes from wisdom. Seneca's advice becomes a guiding star, telling us to tell the difference between suffering that is necessary and suffering that is not, and to use the stoic flame as a lighthouse to show us the way. Let's take this holy journey together strengthening our inner fortresses with stoic principles and shining like lights of resilience in a world looking for comfort in the dark. As we wrap up our three-hour journey into the heart of stoicism, I hope you feel empowered, enlightened, and equipped with the tools to navigate life's ups and downs with a newfound resilience. We've traversed through the principles of stoicism, from understanding what's within our control to embracing obstacles as opportunities for growth. The wisdom of the Stoics is timeless, offering a beacon of clarity in our often tumultuous lives. Remember, Stoicism isn't just a philosophy to be studied, it's a way of life to be lived. The transformation you seek begins with small, consistent steps, whether it's practicing mindfulness, reflecting on your daily experiences, or simply choosing to respond to challenges with calm and rationality, every effort counts. I encourage you to revisit these teachings whenever you need a reminder of your inner strength and the tranquility that can be achieved through stoic principles. 
Life is a continuous journey of learning and growth, and Stoicism provides a solid foundation to build upon. Thank you for spending these hours with me, exploring how to transform your life with Stoicism. The journey doesn't end here, it's just the beginning. Continue to seek wisdom, practice virtue, and live a life of purpose. Remember, the best time to begin your Stoic practice was yesterday. The next best time is now. Let's carry forward the lessons learned and create a life filled with peace, resilience, and fulfillment. Farewell, and may your path be guided by the light of Stoic.